Okay, let's start with this exciting conference today and the workshop and uh, just introduce myself. My name is Darko Yardas, I'm director of Regional Energy Agency, Quarner. And uh, which is less important, more important is that I will be today your moderator. And uh, you will see me all the time, so I will just have a short speech for the beginning. So, uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, for those uh, that are today with us in the conference room and uh, in this beautiful Moise Palace uh, on the island uh, of Tres, and uh, those that are following us uh, online. Yes, this is uh, great uh, and I'm really pleased uh, to open this uh, uh, hydrogen conference because uh, hydrogen is uh, increasingly becoming a topic for European uh, Union uh, primarily as a solution for storing the energy that is, or better to say, electricity that is produced from renewables, but on the other side, uh, for, uh, as a future fuel for road, maritime, and who knows, maybe even the space uh, fuel. I would like to thank uh, to all our lecturers, to all our presenters and uh, uh, panelists uh, today for their effort uh, to prepare all the projects uh, that we are going to to see today. The uh, idea is that we divide this uh, workshop in two blocks. In the first block, uh, we will have the opportunity to listen to our international uh, guests. Uh, it is very important that many of them, or some of them, are coming uh, with the project on the several European islands. Uh, it is important because we are reporting today from the island of Tres, and we will see their experience. And uh, the another block is, uh, after a short coffee break, we'll be with uh, Croatian partners, Croatian presenters, and we will then see uh, what's happening on, in Croatia regarding hydrogen. I will stop here because uh, you know that uh, you will see me all the time, more or less. And uh, with great pleasure, I would like to announce uh, Miss, uh, the head of uh, energy sector in the Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development, uh, Dr. Kristina Celic. Unfortunately, she is not with us today. Uh, she's in Zagreb, hopefully online. And uh, I must say that uh, uh, she is most deserving uh, a, a person that Croatia adopted uh, just recently national hydrogen strategy. So. Christina, if we hear you, if you're online, please, can, you, can we see you? Do we have a connection from Zagreb? Ah, yes, yeah. Christina. Hello. 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 Excellent. Now we hear yeah. you and we see you. Hello. Hello to everyone. I'm so sorry that I'm not with you today. Um, unfortunately, here in Zagreb, we have a lot of uh, things to do and it is not possible for me to organize this meeting. But I would like to thank a lot, uh, Darko, you and your team and everybody gathering there for this meeting and the uh, efforts you are making to, to make this our new strategy, uh, strategy of hydrogen alive. So in the future, we would like to see hydrogen as a new fuel, as you mentioned, particularly uh, in as a clean uh, environment friendly uh, fuel for um, maritime, for road transport, but also for industries and uh, uh, everything where we need, uh, can use it, as I mentioned, as a new fuel. And in, our strategy, uh, we put this, uh, uh, we have uh, eight chapters. We are speaking about production. We are speaking about uh, uh, consumption. We are speaking about transport and hydrogen in the future. And uh, also we are looking how to, to, to transform our, uh, um, uh, our society to green and sustainable with uh, uh, this energy transition. And that means that uh, we will in the future uh, slightly, but you know, with the uh, big efforts, uh, uh, 
uh, in the Union with uh, uh, Europe in the, uh, uh, line with EU, European countries um, uh, make these ta targets. Uh, uh, they are uh, uh, in uh, green green energy plan, particularly in Fit, fit for 55. So hydrogen will help us a lot to do that uh, efficiently. But now, uh, but now. What uh, we need to, to, to have is that uh, uh, mature technologies, we need to develop them, we need to, to start uh, pretty from scratches uh, when we speak about green hydrogen. So, so for that, we need to have a lot of, of uh, green projects also uh, in the renewables, in production of electricity. Uh, to connect that uh, green uh, energy uh, with with this uh, hydrogen production, and uh, uh, we have some presentation, and then ask what are the, the the quantities that we will produce. Well, it depends uh, how we will uh, how we will succeed also with renewable uh, electricity production. And with other uh, uh, activities in production that we uh, could uh, that could help us, for example, waste management, etc., when we uh, could have efficient production of hydrogen. So there are uh, great uh, projects here in Croatia, great projects on islands, but we need to to make them mature. We need to. Uh, have the permit licenses for building that uh, that uh, infrastructure, and this is something which will be challenging in next uh, next uh, time ahead of us. So uh, maybe also to mention that um, uh, 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 beside the strategy with, uh, 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 which is adopted by Croatian Parliament, the highest. Uh, level of the, of the adoption. We also have this, uh, uh, we are working on the programs, on implementation. We have in our um, uh, resilient plan also, uh, we put some uh, part of this uh, as a project, green projects and uh, um, uh, fuel, uh, fueling stations and uh, up to 2020 when we, it comes to projects that we would, would like to realize. It's, uh, 10, ten uh, refueling station of hydrogen um, uh, uh, for for our needs and also 30 megawatts of uh, hydrogen green hydrogen production electrolyzers so this is what we have in, in this uh, this uh, in our national plan and which uh, will be supported for the funds from the funds for uh, eu funds also, uh, what, what are our uh, main activities today is our partnership on uh, North Adriatic Hydrogen Valley uh, with Slovenia and Autonomous Regia uh, Fruli Venezia and Giulia uh, from Northern Italy. So this is also a platform uh, which, is, uh, which is very important for hydrogen technologies, hydrogen implementation, and uh, we are with our colleagues. We will share experience and we will um, apply for um, technical support and uh, for some common projects of interest. So uh, also to mention that uh, everything we are uh, looking uh, and we are working also, we look at the hydrogen possibilities to uh, implement that uh, means for transport and the gas systems. Uh, uh, nowadays, we are uh, speaking about uh, crisis uh, gas uh, with the shortage of gas and uh, what we would like to see we would like to see uh, more quantities of gas coming uh, via croatia to uh, uh, to croatia and other countries and if if it will be decided in favor of new uh, transport capaci uh, capacities uh, uh, Plinacro will build them according to all standards that uh, hydrogen could uh, could be used in the future. So, uh, regarding islands, my dearest and the, the island I, I love the best, uh, Tres, I'm sorry again that I'm not there, but I would like to see a first production of hydrogen uh, on the island of Tres. Also, I would like to to share uh, all information with you and your your um, uh, what would you like to see 
uh, how would you like to use on this island the uh, uh, hydrogen in the future? You have a great potential for so solar uh, production, and you could become also on this island uh, independent from fossil fuels uh, in the very short time if you um, if you uh, manage to to uh, to have this uh, hydrogen projects up to 2030 so with that i would like to to thank you for inviting me and once again i would like to 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 um, uh, wish you a great uh, uh, workshop and I'm looking forward to see the results. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Celic. Yes, we have uh, beautiful weather outside. We have a great atmosphere here in the conference room. Uh, thank you. It's, it's very nice uh, and a pleasure to have a knowledge that uh, we have support and uh, as assistance from the national level. So this gives us uh, uh, security that we will be able to uh, really implement uh, hydrogen projects on the uh, regional and local level. Now I'm turning to uh, Director of uh, uh, Development Agency of the Island of Ceres, my dear friend and colleague, um, uh, Dr. Ugo Toic. Uh, he is also here present as a host and also on behalf of the mayor of the town of Ceres. And uh, I expect that you also give us few support, uh, welcome sentences. Ugo, please. Thank you. Uh, so, good day, good morning, everyone. Uh, and uh, warm welcome to Tres on behalf of the mayor, Marin Gregorovic, and myself, uh, both to you who are here in this uh, room, in the, this marvelous historical palace, and to, to the other who are uh, looking at us virtually throughout Europe. Uh, the mayor could not be present uh, today with us, but he asked me uh, to bring his thanks to, to Darko and to colleagues from Federain for having chosen uh, Tres as location for this uh, conference, uh, namely, uh, the town of uh, Tres, uh, together with the neighboring town of Mariloshin, are um, putting quite uh, uh, heavy efforts in the last years uh, to carry out the clean energy transition. Uh, we started uh, uh, collaborating with uh, Clean Energy for EU Islands Secretariat and uh, in 2019 and then we elaborated the clean energy transition agenda and in this uh, transition agenda uh, three years ago we also mentioned hydrogen as a potential uh, energy for our uh, uh, car ferries and for uh, uh, heavy trucks uh, uh, heavy uh, heavy transport uh, on the island so this is something that is quite uh, important uh, to us. Uh, then uh, in the last year, our municipal uh, waste utility company is also investigating the possibility to use new technologies to transform uh, uh, organic waste uh, into, uh, into hydrogen. So we, we are uh, really keen to, to uh, new uh, developments uh, in these sectors and uh, so I also wish you a uh, good conference uh, plenty of green and cheap uh, hydrogen in, in the future so, thanks thank you Hugo, very much and now before we start with official presentations I would like also that uh, present uh, Melissa Miklos. Uh, she is a uh, fault that we are today here because he chose, she chose the dress for, for, the, for the, this first workshop what we intend to do. And uh, Melissa is working, uh, she, she arrived yesterday from Brussels, she's working in Federen. Who don't know, Federen is our umbrella organization for over energy agencies all over Europe. 
And uh, Melissa, I would like to, that you introduce yourself also in a few sentences before we start. Thank you. Thank you, Darko. So, um, yeah, thank you, everyone. So, uh, yes, I'm here actually uh, in a double capacity as a communication leader of the Green Island project, which you will hear more about in a few seconds. And as Darko said, as also communication officer of the Federen office, Federen is a network of uh, European energy agencies and regions. And it's a true pleasure to count active and ambitious members as the regional energy agency Gwarner and also other colleagues that we have here to uh, share best practices in uh, workshops like uh, this one, develop projects and ultimately reach the EU uh, energy and climate objectives. So uh, really, again, thank you, Darko, for uh, giving me the opportunity to, to do this workshop today. Uh, and uh, I wish you all uh, an interesting session. And thank you again to our hosts in Tres. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Melissa. And just before we start, uh, one little remark. Uh, so we will be able to put the questions after the first block of our international uh, guests. So collect the questions, uh, you here in the room and also the people online. Melissa will collect them and probably rearrange them in two, three, four questions. Depends on time that will be left uh, at the end. So uh, now we can really start officially with first presentations. It is a great pleasure to announce uh, Maria Jean Caparos from Spain. Uh, she has 18 years of experience in managing staff and resources in the hydrogen and fuel cell field, carrying out both management and technical activities related to the development of singular scientific and technical infrastructures such as the National Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technology Testing Center in Spain and a research and development project based uh, on the entire value chain from green hydrogen production, storage, transport, and end-user applications. So, uh, yes, I'm also very curious to hear Maria and what is happening for in the hydrogen ecosystem on beautiful island of Mallorca. Maria, do we hear each other? Yeah, thank you so much, Zako. Can you hear me well? Yes, we hear you excellent. So okay. you can start with your presentation. Thank you, Maria. So thank you so much, Zako, for the introduction. And thank you, thank you uh, to the Energy Director for the Croatian Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development. And of course, uh, to the organization, especially Federen and Melissa, for inviting me to uh, participate in this event. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to share with you a little about the project uh, Green Highland. Uh, I am the general coordinator of the project. I am working uh, in the renewable gases uh, department at Enagas. And um, the idea today is to give you some uh, tips and some information about the project. So um, the first thing that I would like to do is to just in a very brief way, uh, I know, I think that most of you maybe know Enagas, uh, my company. Enagas is a midstream company with 15 years of experience. We are leader in energy infrastructures. We are the uh, transmission system operator of the natural gas grid in Spain. We are also the technical manager of the Spanish gas system. And we have a very strong commitment uh, to decarbonization. We are um, we have activity on, on in Spain, but not only. We are present in eight countries around the world. And in Spain, we have uh, 11,000 kilometers of pipelines. We have six LNG terminals, and we have three underground storage facilities. So we have a lot of experience on uh, energy infrastructures. And uh, the idea is why Enagas is um, interested in this kind of projects. We think that the renewable gases uh, are key for the energy transition. When I am talking about renewable gases, I'm talking about green hydrogen and about uh, biogas, biomethane. So we think that uh, they are key in order to decarbonize uh, hard uh, to electrify sectors and uh, that the, if we use the existing gas infrastructures, uh, we think that this transition would be affordable, would be more economic and we, we will be uh, very quickly on time. Uh, this is a, an example of the project that we made, but I am going to talk to you about the Green Hydrant project. <clears throat> this project 
uh, started uh, um, the, the the thing in order to to think which kind of project we could uh, uh, develop started uh, the idea in uh, it was I think December 2018 when uh, Themex, which is a cement uh, company, a cement industry located in Joseta in Mallorca in Spain, uh, um, announced that they will close the cement plant that they have in Joseta in the in Mallorca in the island. So um, when they announced the closure of this plant, uh, we talked with the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Tourism in Spain, and with the Balearic Govern, and with other companies such as uh, Acción Acemes and Retexis, and we signed an agreement in order to uh, develop projects uh, according to the decarbonization process and in order to reindustrialize. Uh, Joseta, which is the, the um, city uh, where CEMEX is uh, located. So since the beginning, the project includes the development of a green hydrogen production plant from new renewable photovoltaic uh, energies. And this uh, green hydrogen will have multiple applications on the island, including the, the fuel supply to a fleet of, of ESL buses and, and vehicles, including the generation of heat and power for commercial and public buildings, and of course for ferries and, and maritime stations, and uh, also includes the um, injection uh, of part of this green hydrogen into the natural gas grid, which is in, in the in the island. Uh, so in by mid-2019, the Balearic government approved this project uh, and approved the, the declaration of this project such as a strategic industrial project. So there are mm, a lot of, um, I mean, reasons uh, why we are developing this project in Mallorca, but I would like to highlight three of them. The first one is that every year Mallorca um, receives more than 12 million tourists. So we think that this is uh, an excellent showcase and an excellent opportunity to demonstrate that hydrogen could play a key role in the decarbonization process. And then all of these tourists uh, can return to their um, um, to their regions and to their home, talking about how hydrogen could play this role. Uh, the second reason is that uh, although they have uh, the Balearic government uh, has a very strong commitment with the decarbonization process, the reality is that nowadays the Balearic island electricity mix is based on fossil fuels. So we think that in order to improve this uh, uh, role of the renewable energies, um, hydrogen could play an important role in that uh, in, in this um, target. And the last uh, criteria that I would like to highlight is that there is an existing uh, natural gas um, network in the island. So um, uses such as uh, injection into a natural gas grid and decarbonize the end users associated to this natural gas grid could be a, an, an excellent example, an excellent opportunity to see how really it works. So we think that this is a project that could be replicated in other territories and in, and in other islands. And this is an excellent opportunity to establish a, a showcase in Mallorca in order to demonstrate how hydrogen could help to achieve the decarbonization targets. This is the concept of the project. <clears throat> Here you see in green that there is a, a the, the, what is uh, here is the hydrogen production. This is the, the core of this uh, power to green hydrogen Mallorca. So we are developing new photovoltaic plants, one located next to the building, which is uh, the hydrogen plant. And the other one is 20 kilometers away. Uh, so they're going to produce green electricity to uh, provide energy to the hydrogen plant, which will be located in Semex land, uh, in order to produce uh, at the beginning 300 tons per year. So then we are going to transport this hydrogen by two trailers to six different applications. So when we talk about the hydrogen production infrastructures and the hydrogen end users, we are talking about green highland projects which is funded by the Clean Hydrogen Gene Undertaking, and it is an institution for the, um, from the, the European Commission. And um, the idea is that this hydrogen will be used in, uh, by the transport, municipal transport company, which is located in Palma, and uh, they're going to, uh, we are going to develop a Harrier fuel station 
uh, in order to provide this green hydrogen to these hydrogen fleets and to this and also to uh, ten hydrogen light vehicle fleet. Uh, this is from the point of view of mobility applications, but we also have stationary applications, which are here that you have uh, below. You, we are going to install a, a fuel cell in a hotel in Palma in order to provide green energy to the hotel. Then if you go below, you can see here the Port Balear, which we are going to install a 100 kilowatt fuel cell in order to provide green hydrogen, green electricity and green heat to uh, the ferry station. Uh, here on the left, you can, you can see Joseta, which is the municipality, and they are going to install a fuel cell in the sports center, in the municipal sports center. And then here you can see the um, injection or application which is focused on the injection of this hydrogen into the local gas distribution grid, which is operates and maintained nowadays by Redexis. Here is the site's location. The idea is to show you that we are not really trying to develop a project which is focused and located in only one region in Mallorca. The idea is trying to cover the whole island and trying to scale up the project and try to cover the hydrogen demand according it will be arised. So here you have the two photovoltaic plants, and then we have here in number one the PV, uh, the green hydrogen production plant. Sorry, here and number two you have the sports center in Joseta. In number three, there is the uh, a station where we are going to, in, to uh, include this hydrogen and ga natural gas blending and to inject this hydrogen into the natural gas grid. Then in number four, you have the fuel cell at the hotel in Palma. In number five, you can see here the hydrogen fuel station that we are going to build in the uh, EMT in the municipal transport uh, company uh, in, in Palma. And then uh, in number six, you see here the uh, fuel cell that we are going to install in the maritime station in Palma Port. And in yellow, you see here the hydrogen pipeline. This is some of figures of the projects. Uh, nowadays, the two photovoltaic plants are built and they're going to enter into operation in the following days. And now, uh, the, regarding the green hydrogen production plant, we received the electrolyzer uh, last December 2021. Uh, it is installed and now we are uh, working in the rest of the plan, I mean the compressors that are already there, the uh, water tank and the other um, electrical building and, and the two trailers. So we are working in order to complete the whole uh, plant and we expect that by uh, mid-2022, uh, by the summer of this year, the plant will be operate and will enter into operation. Um, one key point for us in this project is that uh, we are uh, in the following slide. We're going to show you the the consortium, and we are 30 partners from 11 countries, nine from the European Union, plus uh, Morocco and plus Chile. And one of the key points here is that we have seven partners that uh, they are going to replicate this project in their own territories. So here you have uh, Ameland, Iran, Madeira, Tenerife, Morocco, Chile, and Greek islands. And the idea is that they are going to develop the studies and the pilots in order to see how they can replicate the project in their own territories. And in addition, we have a, a lot, uh, I mean, a list of observers. We have more than the one that they are shown here because they are really interested in, in the lessons learned and in how they can replicate this project in their own territories. Some key figures that I would like to highlight is that we are looking for uh, a development of a sustainable large scale island-based hydrogen hub in Mallorca. We are not looking for a proof of concept. We am sure that the, the technology is um, ready and the concept is more than proven. So it's not a, pro a question of, of proof the concept, it's a question of develop sustainable hydrogen valleys in order to show that hydrogen has a key role, not in the short term, but also in the short, in the medium and the large term, on the long term, sorry. Uh, for that, we have installed 15 megawatts of PV plants. We are once the, the idea is to start with these 300 tons per year, but we are going to scale the, the ecosystem up to 1,000 tons per year. In that moment, we will avoid more than 21,000 of carbon footprint. And we are also developing a new direct and indirect employment ecosystem associated to hydrogen. 
Another key point of the project is that we are going to, uh, we are now developing a long-term roadmap where uh, hydrogen uh, play a key role. So uh, they, uh, hydrogen will help uh, the renewable uh, energies uh, to play the, the role that they are asked to play. And the idea is to um, include uh, through the um, Energy Institute of the Balearic government. So we have the Balearic government on board, of course, and the idea is to establish this long-term roadmap. Then the scalability and replicability that I mentioned before, just to give you an idea, the estimated investment for the whole project is 50 million euros. And now we have two uh, complement funding. One is 10 million euros from the clean hydrogen undertaking. And the other one is up to 2.5 million euros from IDAI, which is the Spanish Institute for Saving Energy. Uh, depends on the Ministry of uh, Ecological Transition in order to help us with the PV plants. This is a consortium. And um, here you see that we have the developers and infrastructures. Uh, then we have uh, companies that we contribute to develop the studies for hydrogen uses in the maritime sector. The hydrogen roadmap here in, in red you have towards 2050. Of course, we are developing all the studies regarding the impact of the hydrogen ecosystem, the development of the business model, the LCA studies, and all the studies regarding this, uh, the, the project. And of course, uh, we are not talking only about infrastructure, we are also talking about regulations, about guarantees of origin, and uh, about training, and above, of course, communication and dissemination. So there's a, a lot of um, activities that are complements uh, to this hydrogen infrastructure development. And here, and in the last line, you can see the seven partners that we are going to uh, focus their efforts on the replication experiences. The project, as I mentioned before, is supported by the Spanish Ministry and the Spanish government through the Ministry of uh, Industry, Trade and Tourism and through the Ministry of uh, Ecological Transition uh, through IDAE. And of course, uh, it's supported by the uh, Balearic government. This support is key in order to develop this kind of projects because really you have to involve all the stakeholders, not only, I mean, I'm talking about industry or about, of course, academia, but also about policymakers and uh, regarding the regulations, topics, barriers, topics, administrative topics, etc. cetera. Uh, we are, as I mentioned before, <laughs> sorry, the, fund, the project is funded by the Clean Hydrogen Partnership, which is an um, entity which depends on the European Commission. And we have uh, a lot of uh, letter of support and of service which are interested in, the, in how the projects, the lessons learned and the targets of the projects and so on. So thank you so much for your attention. And I invite you to follow us on the, our website. We have created also a link, LinkedIn group a focus on the Green Highland, and we have uh, published in YouTube uh, some videos about the projects, about the status of the projects, and of course, if you, we are, we will be more than happy to answer all the questions regarding the projects. So thank you so much for the opportunity, and congratulations for the event. Maria, thank you very much. Uh, really great project, very ambitious project. I. Mm, Please have all luck for um, realizing that project in Mallorca. Can you for a moment just switch uh, and ask so you can, we can connect the, the voice with the, <laughs> with the person? Thank you very Perfect. much, Maria. So it is, uh, how uh, long is uh, still lasting this project, this uh, Green Heisman? Yeah, we started in 1st of January, 2021, and it's expected to finish in December, 2025. So it's five year project. Perfect. Please, Maria, stay with us. Uh, we are collecting the questions and uh, to the end of this block. Thank you very much for now. Thank you so much. Okay. So let's go to another presentation. Uh, Islander project and uh, welcome uh, to Jesus Buzon Moreno. Moreno is a chemical engineer. He studied in University of Sevilla. He is also coming from Spain. Uh, we are also, we are actually together in one project. It is island there uh, we, because we are providing part of this project on the island of uh, Ceres. And uh, the most uh, uh, and lighthouse in this project and the most pilot uh, activities are done on the German uh, island Borkum. And uh, I think uh, uh, the Moreno will speak also about some uh, 
ideas of what we are implementing on the Borkum. Thank you, uh, Moreno. And yes, the floor is yours. Your okay, name, thank you. 15 minutes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Daco, for the presentation. Uh, could you see my screen? Hello? We hear you excellent, but we don't have a presentation. You cannot see the presentation? No. Uh, let me a second. Take time, take time. We have, we are patient here. Yes. Okay. Now. Now we, you we see, see now? something different. Yes, we hear, we see your name now on the screen, uh, but still not the presentation. Okay. Let me one second. Uh -huh. Maybe now it's possible to see the presentation. Um, sorry, online we can see the presentation. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, perfect. Bravo, Moreno. It's now uh, working. Better. Yes, we see clearly at your presentation now. Okay, thank you, thank you. Perfect. Perfect. So thank you, thank you, Darko, for the for the presentation and thanks. To, for the organization, especially to, to Melissa for invite us. Uh, I think that you can see right now my, my screen, I can start the presentation. Uh, I want to remark that the presentation is divided in two parts. First, uh, we're going to talk about the, the Islander project uh, in a general uh, presentation, and then we pass to specify more about the role of the hydrogen in the, in the project. Idener, my company, is, is in charge of the deployment of the hydrogen system and also Ayesa company is the coordinator of the, of the Islander project and also is present in this, in this workshop. Uh, first, I want to highlight that the Islander project uh, is going to be implemented in the Borkum Island. It's a, it's a highland in the country of Germany with the goal of the, of the highland and uh, the carbonization. Regarding the, the main points, uh, the project pretend to achieve the, the DRL7 with some prototype demonstration system. The duration of the project is uh, four years. It will start it in, in October of 2020. Uh, 11 partners are inside the consortium from seven different countries. And the total funding is more than 80 million. Uh, as I say before, we have uh, seven different countries in the consortium. There are Spain, France, uh, UK, Belgium, Germany, uh, Croatia, uh, and Greece. Uh, it's possible to see in this picture on the right of the screen. Uh, and you can see also here the name of the, of the different organization. Uh, this is slide, it's uh, regarding the, the objectives, the, the main goals inside of the Islander project. Uh, we want to remark to, to develop a, a PT platform using optimization techniques, where we will manage uh, the distributed energy source together with hybrid energy storage solution, and also incorporating demand response and, and lock and power balancing. And also, we want to remark to develop uh, an improved multi-scale forecasting methodology based uh, on, the, on the modeling of, of demand and supply with machine learning in order to supply a uh, forecasting data. And of course, uh, to implement uh, a methodology uh, for the optimal distributed energy resource and a hybrid energy storage system for the optimization of the, of the investment cost and of course of the operation cost. Uh, this is like show, it's a, it's a picture, it's a wide margin of the Islander project where 
the main technology that will be implemented uh, are shown. The, the green, this green box reflects the main technology to be, to be implemented. Uh, very briefly, uh, later uh, B, uh, it's uh, an ultracapacitor that um, can store much more energy per volume than uh, other type of uh, capacitor or device and can accept and deliver charge uh, much faster than uh, that other device uh, and also together with the ultracapacitor, a battery system, system for, for energy storage will be installed. Uh, letter C is the hydrogen system uh, that uh, thinking in the, in the seasonal storage will be able to produce energy when the Iceland has more demand, for example, in the, in the holidays period during, during the summer. Uh, letters D, D1 and D2 add, are uh, in reference to providing a solution to some houses and buildings in relation to the, to the renewable energy sources. Uh, in this sense, here will be supplied PV panels, uh, battery packs uh, for energy storage, and, and the required power electronics uh, for the for the operation, as for example inverters. Uh, letter number E attends to a seawater heating, where the intention is to use uh, the heat pumps and develop a, a pilot to provide heat and cooling services. And uh, the letter F, it's about the street uh, light heating. Uh, here, the, the, the light point will be connected to the, to the ET platform that, that I mentioned before for the optimization of the consumption and, and to follow up the, the, the evolution of the, of the consumption. And finally, letter G, it's regarding uh, some station for electrical vehicles. Uh, and with the installation of them, the project will contribute to the goal to, to implement the, the electric mobility by, by 2030. Uh, okay, now we can pass to explain uh, more in detail the, the, the hydrogen store system. The, the system thinking is thinking about the seasonal storage. Uh, you're probably now, hydrogen is a, is a very, very, very promising energy vector and can be stored and used when required without loss of performance. The, the hydrogen is a real alternative to the, to the fossil fuel. It's a way for energy produ production with zero emissions, contributing in this sense to the, to the discarbonization of the, of the highland. Another reason for the seasonal storage in this Islander project is, the, is the, the instability of the Iceland population. So in this sense, the energy consumption is uh, very heterogeneous and having an uh, energy buffer can help to, to absorb the, the, the consumption peaks, especially during, during the summer. Um, finally, uh, remark that uh, storing the energy use where required, it's, a, it's obviously it's a great advantage. The, the climate in, in, on the Iceland is changing. Uh, maybe during uh, periods of uh, clothing, it's not possible to produce energy, for example, for, for technology as, as, as PV panels, it's conventional uh, renewable energy. So uh, in this sense, it could be interesting to, to spend, to, to use, to use the electricity for the, for the hydrogen system. Uh, and this slide it's only it's only a simulation of what is expected with the hydrogen system in the in this Islander project. The consumption on the Borkung Island uh, in summer is multiplied by three, uh, and the, the operation procedure is uh, of course cyclos of charge and discharge as possible to see in in this in this graphic. Uh, the amount of of hydrogen uh, storage capacity that will be installed in the Islander project. It's around uh, 144 kilograms. It's almost uh, 5,000 kilowatts hour. And the maximum value, it's, uh, it's when the, the cycle of changing in the, in the storage is it's complete. Uh, now we pass to some general aspects of the system that will be installed uh, on the on the island of Borkum. 
first remark that this is a, it's a pilot system. Uh, the capacity of the electrolyzer solution is uh, 25 kilowatts with a production of uh, around 10 kilograms per, per working day. Uh, remarking, remark here the, the great advantage of the system regarding the, the modularity. The system is composed uh, by modules of uh, five kilo, kilowatts each one. So it's possible to turn on or maybe to off the, the modules are required regarding the requirements at each moment. And of course, add more modules later if it is necessary. It's a great advantage about the modularity. Regarding the storage, the, the, the storage system is composed by eight bundle of bottle with a total capacity of uh, 144 kilograms at a pressure of uh, 300 bars. And the fuel cell, it's also like the electrolyzer solution, is also a modular solution of 15 kilowatts where hydrogen uh, is the main input. Uh, obviously, uh, electricity will be, will be produced. Um, I remarked that the, the fuel cell and electrolyzer will be allocated in a, in a container, in a 20 feet container, while the, the bundles for the, for the storage system uh, will be allocated uh, on site. Uh, here you can see more information about the, about the system. Uh, we will have a, a production of hydrogen around one, one normal cubic meter per hour of each uh, module. The system has, uh, of course, a treatment water plant that, that will be treat the, the water conductivity of the, of the feed stream, adapting the water for the, for the electrolyzer feeding conditions. Uh, it is required, obviously, internet connection to connect the system to the, to the AT platform. And as we commented before, uh, it's possible to operate each module in, a, in an independent way, depending on the needs or, or the requirement at, at any moment. And finally, uh, regarding the quality of the products, the obtained hydrogen will be 99.999% uh, of, of quality, of, of quality. Uh, and some other information about the hydrogen system, the, the reaction time of the electrolyzer is uh, 30 seconds, as well as the reaction time of the, of the fuel cell. Regarding the safety system, uh, some items or points are in mind. Uh, it will be installed uh, ventilation lines for, to conduct to, to, to a safe location. There are also low and high pressure readings in the system. Of course, a redundant, redundant sex, sex sensor for the, for the liquid detention. And if leaks of hydrogen uh, are detected, it will be activated a safety shutdown procedure for, for safety reasons. Mm, uh, also, we want to remark that the, the ubication of the hydrogen system on the island has been detected. And ice space, it's available, it's around 10 or 12 meters. And you can see a photo of the plate where we will install the system and water connection and power lines are near of the, of the final location. And to finish this presentation, I think we're in time, yes. Uh, to finish the presentation, we have to include here a, a basic uh, gun sharp of our intentions. Uh, we have achieved the, the first step in, uh, of, the, of this gun chart uh, regarding the preliminary design, uh, placement selection, uh, final sizing, uh, and others. And right now, probably next month, uh, Edenair is going to start to the, with the production activity that it is expected a duration around 10 or 12 months. Maybe a little bit more, depending on the availability of raw materials and the, the, the currently worldwide crisis that we have right now. But it is expected uh, 20 or, or 12 months. The installation of the goods uh, is expected after summer of 2023. And then finally, the, the testing activities will be, will be carried out. Uh, and this is all for my side. Uh, thank you.
Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any question? Great, Jesus, and um, I'm also grateful that we are also part of this uh, Great Horizon project, uh, and we are looking with uh, big eyes on what will happen on Borkum because probably we can maybe re re replicate something of your, of your project. It is it is really challenging because you are mixing uh, photovoltaic, uh, wind, uh, storage, uh, production of hydrogen. Uh, uh, discharge in charging and seasonal yeah. problems what you have on, on the island. So it is very challenging uh, uh, project and I'm very curious how are you going uh, to balance all these things uh, on the island. Uh, thank you, thank you. Mr. Moreno, thank you very much. You have uh, some comment? No, no, it's, it's okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. Uh, stay with us also to the end of this block. Thank you. Of course. Um, <clears throat> before I skip to, to, to Emek and, and Orkney Islands, I would like also to uh, thank uh, University of Rijeka because today we are in this beautiful building that belongs to the university and they are very open always to rent uh, us the space for conferences, workshops and so on. So thank you again for the hosting us today. Okay, also one very interesting project. Uh, uh, Leonor von Walzen, uh, I hope uh, she is with us. Uh, she is a civil engineer and start uh, in the, as an expert for tide and uh, wave energy. And uh, she was uh, first working in the University of Edinburgh. And then new challenge uh, on the island of Orkney and the uh, European uh, Energy Center uh, on Orkney. And uh, yes, how it happened uh, that, that you uh, go to the island because uh, there is happening uh, much more exciting things than in Edinburgh? Um, I, partly, yes. I decided to move even further north um, and I'm very happy I did. Um, there's very exciting stuff happening here on the Orkney Islands. Because um, Orkney which... Islands were one of the first islands, I think, or maybe even the first that uh, started with uh, demonstrating uh, the, the, the old kind of projects uh, based on the, on the hydrogen. So, yes, they have a lot of experience through many European and uh, national projects. So, please, floor is yours. Start with your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, I think I am sharing my screen already. Yes. Okay. Um, so thank you everyone, thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to speak uh, and present basically the Orkney case study. So my name is Leonor or Noor van Velzen. I'm the Hydrogen Project Manager at the European Marine Energy Centre or EMEC. So I'll, today I'll just give a quick overview of some of the work that EMEC has been doing um, and has been involved in regarding hydrogen in this uh, island environment. So I'll do this by doing a quick introduction to EMEC, uh, explain how Orkney started with green hydrogen, and then I'll make the link from Orkney to the other islands and other hydrogen valleys through this example um, of the replication studies that we're hearing today about as well. Okay, so first of all, EMEC. We are located on the Orkney Islands, as, as mentioned. Uh, that's an archipelago of about 70 islands in the north of Scotland. About 20 of these are inhabited and that we have a total of about 20,000 people. And being at the north of Scotland, it means that we're also very much exposed to the elements, um, which means that there are excellent wind, wave and tidal resources. So it's also a great location to test wave and tidal energy devices. I'm just sorry, just to check. I think my screen has gone further. Can you see the island of Orkney on your slides on your screen? No. I think that uh, I'll, I might try to see if I, no, just the first slide. Okay, I'll just share it again. Sorry for that, because I, I have moved on and I can see on the overall one uh, that it's not moving on. 
So sorry for that. I'll just do it this way. And then hopefully that works. Yes, okay, I think now you can see my screen. Um, so I'll just continue. So this is um, the Orkney Islands. It's in the north of Scotland, as you can see. Um, and because we have this great, uh, excellent wind, wave and tidal resources, that it's also a great location to do testing of these innovative wave and tidal energy devices. So that's how EMEC was set up in 2003 as a center of excellence on marine energy research and development. So basically we're an incubator for the development of wave and tidal energy devices. And just to give an indication of what I mean when I talk about wave and tidal energy devices, um, here are two examples. So on the left side, you can see two pictures of the tidal energy device developed by Orbital Marine Power. This is the O2 device. And then on the right side, you can see a wave energy device that is developed by motion. And this is their Blue X device. So then you might say, why hydrogen uh, if you're set up as this wave and tidal test center? Now, with all the resources that we have here in Orkney, Orkney is actually able to produce more electricity than we have demand. And because we're in the north of Scotland and we're at the edges of the electricity grid, there are constraints on feeding renewable energy generation into the grid. So that's why in well around 2015, I think, um, EMEC started to consider producing hydrogen from otherwise curtailed power. So basically what we're doing is demonstrating the role of hydrogen in this um, in the island energy transition and providing a technology demonstration platform for low carbon technologies from generation to end use. Now, our focus is very much on Orkney um, where we have this abundance of renewable sources, uh, but we don't actually have a gas grid and we are heavily dependent on planes and ferries for a connection to the rest of the world. Uh, these planes and ferries are very much our lifelines. So when you consider these island boundaries, hydrogen and, and its derivatives as well, I should say, can play a significant role in decarbonization. And basically in these three simple steps, which is I'm making it easier, sound easier than it is, I guess, but these steps would be one, make the hydrogen when the renewable supplies exceed the export capacity. Two, transport it to the location of use on the islands. And three, use it as this low carbon energy source for a range of applications from the transport, so roads, ferries, planes, but also heating and power supply. So I'll go into slightly more detail in these uh, three steps. So for the first one, hydrogen production, we go to the island of Edi. This is one of the Orkney Islands. And um, on this island, we have our EMEC hydrogen production site. And this is adjacent to the tidal power test site. So at this site, the electrolyzer is currently recommissioning and it will run on electricity from the onshore wind turbine, which is a community owned turbine. and the tidal turbine that's being tested. So the works here are very much based on different projects. And just to highlight one is the ITEG project. And this is where the orbital tidal marine turbine that I um, showed the pictures of earlier, this turbine will be connected to an electrolyzer and together with the implement, and it will then be implemented together with an energy management system. And I want to uh, mention ITEG because it also is an example of this energy system integration aspect of what we're doing here. Because additionally to um, commissioning the recommissioning the electrolyzer and the works that are um, happening on site currently, we're also commissioning a flow cell battery at the moment. 
And this means that we can have a more controlled input into the electronizer from the variable wind and tidal resources. So it becomes a more controlled input and therefore outputs of the electrolyzer. Now, all of this, I should say, is, is relatively small scale, but it's still a huge undertaking with many different partners involved. And there's also many lessons learned and to be learned that will be relevant to other islands, but also other hydrogen valleys. And I'll come back to that later. So then we get to the point of hydrogen transport because we don't have a gas grid and the hydrogen is made on a different island than mainland. Once the hydrogen is produced, it needs to go off of the island of Edi and it needs to go to Orkney mainland. So this is done by hydrogen trailers. Uh, and Maria had also mentioned this. These are these hydrogen tube trailers. And the hydrogen is, is stored in compressed gas in cylinders in these trailers. And these trailers then go onto the ferry. And this has also led to this first of a kind training course for uh, by uh, the Orkney College to equip the mariners with the necessary skills and knowledge to work on the board on on board of a hydrogen fueled vessel. And all of this is very much um, building on different projects, as I mentioned already, and one of them would very much be big hits. So then we go um, to the use of hydrogen. So once it has been transported to mainland Orkney, it can go to where it's needed. And to highlight just two examples, um, which are, would be of great interest to islands, archipelagos, archipelagos, sorry, I always struggle with that word. Um, these are the maritime and, and aviation sector. As I mentioned, they are very much our lifeline to be connected to the rest of the world. So one of the uses would be maritime sector. And as I mentioned, we have different ferries. Um, there's actually nine inter-island ferries and they use about 2.8 million liters of gas oil per year. So we're very much on a mission to decarbonize this element as well. Now, these are just some examples of projects that we have been involved in or are involved in. Um, and within the maritime sector, these are High Dime and High Met. And in aviation, some examples are High Flyer and SAIT. I won't go into much more detail due to the time. So just to then um, go into the island replication element of this. So having set the scene of uh, Orkney and this case study of Orkney, we're now building on the past and current projects and sharing the lessons that we've learned, but also taking on lessons that other projects and other islands and hydrogen valleys are learning to really use in these replication studies. So my fellow presenters of today uh, or this morning, at least, um, these projects like Islander, Heaven and Green Highlands, it's key to really use the lessons learned from all the different elements from Orkney, but also from the other islands and hydrogen valleys and learn from each other and build on the work that has been done before. So that said, um, it's very much acknowledging as well that all of this work is done in collaboration with a wide range of partners uh, from developers to universities to regulatory bodies and funders. Um, and it's very much working together to support this innovation. So that said, uh, just to include, uh, conclude, sorry, um, green hydrogen, for example, from tidal energy can be this building block for decarbonization. And to do this, the collaboration and demonstration are key to replicate work. Um, and we'll continue to innovate together. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And that's me. Great, perfect. Uh, can I put a question? And, of course. Uh, of course. 
Uh, we know that in Scandinavian countries, a uh, lot of ferries in maritime transport are fitted, and today they're based on the electric propulsion with batteries and so on, and it is ongoing process there. Uh, we are waiting for the first ship or ferry uh, complete on hydrogen, so I know that you are testing that, and how close are you to these solutions? I would say there's a lot of different elements there. Um, we are looking, I don't think there's one solution that's going to be the solution, but hydrogen can be part of that. So at the moment, for example, um, we have been involved with this HIDEM dyeing project, which was looking at integrating hydrogen and injecting it into a diesel engine. Um, so you just get this blended gas. There's also that, um, that project has finished, but we weren't able to do the demonstration. Part of that was regulatory aspects um, because you need to have approval to do this demonstrations from the Maritime Coast Guard Agency, the MCA. Now, uh, we've moved on a lot from that project. We've learned a lot and we said, okay, we'll take it, we'll take smaller steps. So we're, take, we're doing um, demonstrations, not of a whole vessel, but saying, okay, we'll take this small element and demonstrate that and then show that safe. And then in that way, hope to get approval in smaller steps from the MCA to move forward to, in the end, full vessels on either hydrogen or electric propulsion. So okay. we're on our way. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you answer. very much for your answer. Thank you. Okay, now we are slowly moving from islands to, to the coast, and uh, we are now in Netherlands. Actually, I'm calling uh, Mr. Patrick Nuben. Uh, Patrick is the architect of Heaven, a game-changing cross-sectoral EU and national-funded green hydrogen value chain program through which the North Netherlands uh, have become the first hydrogen valley of Europe. It's very popular now, these hydrogen valleys. We have also one. We will later on discuss about our hydrogen valley, but uh, your experience and your results are really valuable for, for this, our conference and workshop. Thank you very much, uh, Patrick. Floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. I hope I don't look too blue because I just saw that I had a very blue uh, uh, face, which doesn't reflect my, my character. It's more red, actually. Um, well, yeah, thank you for, for having me. I will give you an, an, an introduction into our project Heaven and um, give you some, 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 some backgrounds on that and also some information on how we made the step to becoming a hydrogen valley, what was needed, what were the arguments, what was the, what's the narrative. And gradually I will um, go down to more hydrogen valleys and what we're going to do now. And, also an open invitation to you all already uh, and to reach out to each other because in looking at the current uh, energy situation in, in Europe, I think we don't have the um, ability to, to any longer, uh, let's say, continue to be too dependent on fossil fuels. So we have to gradually step out of that and hygiene is a very very interesting factor for that, as the previous speakers uh, have announced. So uh, let me start with my uh, my presentation. I will try to do it within the nine minutes as uh, Melissa ordered me. So I'll try to do that. And if there are any questions, I'm very glad to answer them. And I suppose, Melissa, that the presentation will be shared to the uh, to the participants into the um, uh, um, into the, the conference. And if there are any questions, after that, we are I'm very glad to answer. And by the way, I'm going to visit Croatia next week for a holiday week. So um, I'm quite in the north of Dalmatia. So maybe I could hop over to your beautiful island and see it myself. OK, let's, um, let's get started. That's green. OK. In, can this be seen? Yes, perfect. We see you. OK, hold on. Yeah, let me see the, the whole uh, thing. This can be seen uh, in full, I suppose. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Well, let's let's uh, let's, uh, let's start. Let's... Um, the presentation is named from heaven to hydrogen valleys, and sometimes in Europe, if you create a good name for a project, you will win. I can tell you. And um, 
and who doesn't want to go to heaven in the end and not yet we're still here uh, at the moment so um let me give you some uh, some backgrounds um first where are we located this is the northern part of of uh, Europe, of course with the blue areas there is the land is, is, is the is the north sea and this actually is our region uh, the heaven region which has become let's say the first hydro valley with the help of Europe, of course, and many others. And what's now the situation? Why did we come to this plan? This is a, a graph which uh, is divided in two, the top graph and the bottom graph. This is um, the situation which has triggered our region, regions actually, to step into the Niger Valley. The top graph uh, depicts, let's say, the extraction from uh, the groaning and gas field. The Groningen natural gas field is one of the biggest onshore gas fields in north in northern Europe. Has brought a lot of prosperity to to the Netherlands and to northern Europe, but also some some problems like little earthquakes, which have led to the situation that the field will be stopped at the end of 2023. Bear in mind, the current energy situation may um, may um, result in that the uh, shutdown of the field will be delayed for some um, for some time, but that's a political discussion. Uh, but on the top graph, you can see the cumulative extraction from the field. It's a very big field. In the last years, we, we've run down the production. It's, it's our hot lung machine of our natural gas system. Shutting down this field means a lot. It has, has a dramatic effect on the region. And actually, you can see that we had a prognosis made on going down more in 2025. Actually, it will be stopped in 2023. But the interesting and the dramatic graph is the bottom one. This um, 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 is a, a analysis of the result on the regional economy. By shutting down the field, the regional economy will drop down 8 to 10 percent, actually it's being um, being um, um, uh, magnified at the current with the with the current energy situation so we need to do something if we don't do something if we shut down the field and do, don't do anything we have a very very big problem so we decided to make a plan and we decided to make the plan to become a green hydrogen economy an integrated green hydrogen economy that is let's say the main topic of the narrative for our region to step into this next game what are now the elements of the narrative? Well, first, we have uh, several assets. We have a very large natural gas um, uh, uh, extraction, but we also have connected the fields, the gas fields, with uh, you, the, the Netherlands and the, and the remainder of Europe. Our molecules actually travel up to northern Italy, uh, if you would put it in, 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 in a travel uh, region. Um, uh, we have a large uh, energy intensive cluster due to the fact that we have a lot of gas, we have a lot of salt, and we have, let's say, very close proximity to the North Sea, as you could have seen. But we have a challenge, and the challenge is not only shutting down the gas field, but also complying with the European and, and global um, 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 carbon emission uh, uh, challenges. But stopping this gas field will result in a dramatic loss of 20,000 jobs. And this is the biggest element in the, uh, in, the, um, in the narrative. So what have we done? We want to become a target region. Hydrogen fits us as a glove. We have had more than 70 years experience in getting up the gas and cleaning it and transporting it all around Europe. Hold on, one more moment, please. Um, um, thereby, we, we wanted to and are going to step into becoming an integrated hydrogen economy. Um, we are developing a full green hydrogen value chain. We will deploy clean and renewable energy because the North Sea is one big energy park for us, which we can put in several, uh, many uh, windmills and harvest the energy. That will uh, increase efficiency of the industry, reduce the greenhouse gas uh, uh, emissions, and by producing the green hydrogen uh, and of course connecting it with the usage in industry build environment and mobility that is one of the key narratives and in in the, in the flanking aspects we are doing a lot of research and innovation deploying advanced technologies and uh, and um, are engaged in the upskilling and reskilling of workers because you can build it but you also have to maintain it otherwise let's say the uh, the investments would be very poorly uh, uh, in efficiency now 
what are we going to do? We are more or less um, here. Hold on one more. I'm back. Apologies for that. Um, we are actually at the moment, we are here. Actually, we are more or less, um, let's say, here we have had some 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 vehicles are running on hydrogen and now we are going to step into let's say ramping up the the product and we want to go here we want to have deep penetration of hydrogen in the economy in society and actually use it everywhere we could find the business case and in essence that could be in every situation where natural gas is used of course, we want to, we need to run on the natural gas and we ramp up the hydrogen. Therefore, we need to produce the hydrogen in large amounts and ever increasing amounts. And the hydrogen valley model, which we explained somewhat later, is a very good stepping stone to that. You can have large ones and small ones, the variance in it, but the hydrogen valley is actually the model of helping you and us becoming an integrated hydrogen economy. It's a um, it's a let's say it's a model. It's a, it's a method, and it really helps. So, um, and in general, when I speak to my colleagues in, uh, in let's say on hydrogen, we welcome them if they come here to the first hydrogen valley of Europe. We have made an animation. I will not show it. It will be made available to you by clicking the link. This is our region, and actually, we are going to use hydrogen in industry, produce it, use it in industry, heat and power, build environment mobility and we will also transport it of course in pipelines and in trailers and we will store it in large underground salt caverns because storage is in essence in essence the holy grail of renewals you need to store them uh, in order to make them uh, very well effective and of course i must not forget that we have received a lot of help from europe in the form of the Clean Hydrogen Partnership, formerly known as the Fuel Cells and Hydrogen Joint Undertaking. This is a joint endeavor. You cannot do this alone. You have to collaborate and cooperate. And that's where Europe comes in. In general, this is, this is a, a, a view which is in general frightening, that's intended to, but this is more or less a scheme of the project heaven. But if you look through it, I will not go into much too in too much detail because that would be too uh, out of scope. You can see four clusters, cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, cluster four. We, we um, chose the, the uh, division into clusters to more, make it more, let's say manageable. And all the reddest dots are projects. So we are going to harvest energy from the North Sea, make electrolyzers, put the, um, the hydrogen into um, pipelines on industry parks, bringing it around, producing green methanol, green kerosene. We have other electrolyzers and under construction as well, where they, uh, the, the hydrogen will be, let's say, um, packed into cylinders and be put on board of barges. Um, and barges will um, bring salt from our region to Rotterdam twice a week. And that is a business case. Furthermore, we will uh, store excess hydrogen in the underground uh, salt caverns and a salt cavern is really a big storage. You have to think about a volume of 1 million cubic meters if, if it would be water volume. That would be enough to, let's say, put an Eiffel Tower in it and have some space left. It's about 70 meters wide, to, um, about 300 meters high, such a, um, such a cavern. And we will build several. We will use hydrogen in the build environment. In the environment. 100 new built houses, up to 1,200 refurbished homes, which have gas boilers, which will be replaced by hydrogen boilers or fuel cell boilers. Uh, we will have other uses, it's like uh, connecting it to data centers, uh, in smaller ones, not, not the very big ones. And uh, we have a, a special project in, um, in the municipality of Emmen, where we have a former gas cleaning installation, the natural gas, contains sulfur, you have to desulfurize, it's called a gas cleaning insulation. It has been decommissioned, but all the uh, underground infrastructure is still there, we will use it for hygiene. Then at current, there is a new pipeline being constructed from this facility where there will be a five to 10 and even higher megawatt electrolyzer built. Uh, the pipeline is being constructed already, it's being brought to two enormous 
natural gas fired turbines, which will gradually step over to hydrogen. And we have a vast mobility scheme. Apart from the barge, as I said, we have actually here are four fueling stations. There will be five. We will one. We will have in operation one hundred and five passenger vehicles, several refuse, so garbage trucks, up to thirteen heavy duty vehicles, um, several light duty vehicles like you know, the, the DHL things, and already in operation are twenty uh, fuel cell buses plus another 10, which are now being commissioned to become an operation. So we have a vast mobility uh, aspect in the project. But we didn't stop because our project has about a size of about 90 to 100 million euros. We receive a contribution from Europe of 20 million euros, and we are co-funding it with regional and national funds up to 40 million euros and even higher. That's all, let's say, discussions with the regional and the national governments. But we made a, a next step. We prepared another investment plan, which was actually this one. It's actually the extension of our hydrogen valley, not only in the Netherlands, but also there beyond. But in our region, this investment plan in the yellow in the yellow circle, which is our hydrogen valley, will ramp up to about 9 billion euros. That's an enormous number. And it involves actually decarbonizing and electrification of the industry the mobility sector and part of the housing sector, not the whole housing sector. That would be too much at the moment. But there's more. Um, we are not alone. We had a beautiful presentation from my dear colleague Maria Caparas. Uh, you would have a presentation from EMEC. Um, and um, um, these three regions, together with our region, are actually the first hydrogen valleys in Europe. You can see it here at the Orkneys. We have the Big Hit project. We have our Heaven project and we have the, the Green Highland project, which is also the organizer of this session. And thank you for having us. Um, the three apartheid uh, are three very, uh, let's say, game changing Hydrogen Valley um, uh, projects in Europe. But we're not alone. As you can see, there are many more in the world. And actually, we are now, as Heaven, focusing on creating some cross border activities with our. New German and Danish and other neighbors, but I think there is room for more. And I think the island of Kress would be a very, very well equipped hydrogen valley uh, in itself, but also maybe also connected to its, let's say, neighboring regions, uh, as the uh, minister, uh, Mrs. Cedic, uh, also explained already. Um, but there's more. Let, let me get back to the hydrogen valleys. What, what, what are we going to do? We want more of the same. So we want to have more hydrogen valleys in Europe and actually in the world. We want to connect them. By connecting them, you will produce more hydrogen. Hydrogen will become more or less a commodity, become cheaper, more attractive. And by that, we can fulfill our green dream, stepping out of fossils, becoming clean and pure and um, uh, benefit from all the advantages of hydrogen. And this is also uh, another picture I wanted to show you. There are many hydrogen valleys under development in Europe, the, the yellowish dots. We, of course, have the, the three big hit heaven with the logos and here Green Highland. There are many more, and you can see the, the lines, the red lines, the blue lines, the yellowish and the greenish ones. These are the European transport corridors. Might be very interesting to connect to that. And again, as I said, we are going to engage in, in cross-border activities in our region but we are open to connect to whomever is interested, of course. And, and I think that might also uh, be the case with Crest Island as an example of an island community becoming Hydrogen Valley, um, um, let's say molded to the examples um, um, Maria explained with the Green Highland Project and the Big Hit. So we're in for it and we want to collaborate. So reaching out to everybody, because if you can't share, you can multiply, you cannot multiply. And that's what hygiene needs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick, very much. And uh, thank you for this dot on Island of Tres, because uh, yes, maybe that is the next our project on this island. Um, <clears throat> just a short comment, uh, because you put it in the red uh, letters uh, on one slide. You said that you lost uh, 20,000 jobs in one moment. And uh, uh, as a target, so in the same slide, you said you are reskilling and upskilling the, the workforce. 
Are you doing that uh, through the regular school system or you have separate workshops or something like that? I'm very curious about that, yes. Yeah, I can, I can elucidate on that. Um, the jobs aren't lost yet because the field isn't shut down yet, but you can see when, when such an announcement is made, uh, the industry is going to uh, ramp down its activities. So the prospect, if we wouldn't do anything, is a job loss of 20,000 people and 20,000 families, uh, etc. And these are more people, of course. So uh, go, stepping into the hydrogen valley model helps us uh, create attention for hydrogen, create a situation where we can reskill the people who are working in the natural gas sector because they are very skilled people but it's not only academics it's it's over the whole let's say learning curve so from vocational to uh, applied sciences to academics so the whole bunch so the reskilling and the upskilling is being done by let's say intensive discussions and uh, developing programs with all the educational institutions so let's say from the academic to the universities of uh, um, as applied sciences to the vocational level. Everybody is involved and it, this is coming up slowly, uh, but it, it is coming. So it means um, re-educating engineers, re-educating and re-schooling economists, uh, lawyers, uh, even to that's the vocational people, the, the welders, uh, even timbermen, uh, uh, people who uh, can maintain installations in industry, but also ships trucks and in the end even trains and airplanes because we, we also have a have, a, have an airfield here uh, Groning Airport Hill, which has already been renamed to Hydrogen Valley Airport because they have a very big solar field and uh, the, the intent is to convert the electricity into hydrogen store it at the airport and use the hydrogen to um, fuel all the ground equipment because obviously using it uh, in, in airplanes is somewhat further away, but will certainly come within, let's say, the, the coming 15, 20 years. So it's a, it's a big um, integrated uh, approach we, uh, we, we try to demonstrate from, let's say, including investments and innovations, which are combined. And around that, you need to have skilled labor force, skilled workforce. That's essential. Thank you very much, Patrick, on this explanation. I think it's a very important issue for the further development of, of hydrogen in Europe. And now we finally came to, to our uh, last presenter in this block. Uh, it's my good friend and colleague from Slovenia, our neighbor country, from Velenje, Boštian Krenz. Do we see each other? Yes, yes, Perfect. I can see you so, loud and clear. Okay, Greetings you see from, my... from Island of Tres. I'm sorry, uh, you're more sorry that you're not here with us on Island of Tres. Uh, he's running uh, Xena, also regional energy agency, also a part of Federen. And uh, yes, uh, some time ago you had a great project about some buses, vehicles on hydrogen. What is happening with your project, Bostian? <laughs> yes, hello Darko, hello to everyone. Uh, I really wish to be with you today uh, because um, I believe it's uh, Tres is one of the most beautiful islands uh, I've ever been and I've been around in Croatia quite a lot. So, uh, well, I hope to be next time. Uh, yes, uh, we, our, we are still developing our project. Uh, we start our, um, our activities uh, back in 2017 when we joined to the uh few fuel cells and hydrogen uh joint initiatives in uh, with the european commissions in brussels uh and ever since we we are following all the activities uh of european activities uh, in the field of the hydrogens uh so uh we we started with initial idea that there is a lot of uh small scale cities i would say this was between 50 and 150000 inhabitants in the in the eastern and southeastern europe uh, which are very familiar like our city that uh, they have a uh, local productions uh, of the electricity uh, it's powered by the coal and uh, we said that uh, in these uh, power plants, there are al already some facilities uh, using uh, hydrogen, uh, producing hydrogens. And there is also a lot of extras of electricity which cannot be sent into the grid, uh, which cannot be sent into the network. So with these extras, we can produce uh, uh, hydrogen uh, through via uh, 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 electrolyzers. 
So uh, we believe this could be like a local uh, production of the hydrogens. This could be uh, not affecting uh, that uh, we can produce uh, more electricity, but it's only for the electricity which cannot be sent into the grid. So no extra fuel needed for this one. Um, and we also we could uh, develop our platform to be like a role model, especially for the southeast and eastern Europe cities. Uh, well, it, uh, the first idea came out in 2010 already when uh, our na national um, fuel carrier, uh, Petrol, launched the first idea how to, to, to build a first hydrogen refueling station. They came initially first into our municipality, but at that time our municipality could not uh, could not provide uh, appropriate demand side. So we could not uh, say that we could will buy some uh, hydrogen vehicles. At that time, uh, BMW launched like the very first uh, uh, commercial vehicles at the time. Uh, but then in 2019, we realized that uh, we will run out with our concession for the public transportation systems. And then we understand that we have to change uh, the fuel of these uh, buses, public transportation buses. And since 2009, we have a free public transportation systems. And uh, this could be powered by the hydrogens. Uh, we found the partners in this project. So that's a local power plant who can produce uh, hydrogens. Uh, municipality who can fulfill the demand side. We buy six buses together with the nearby municipalities and the state which could support with uh, uh, building the infrastructures uh, for the production facilities and refuel extensions. So at the first stage, uh, the idea was that we produce uh, hydrogen from the local power plant. Uh, we slightly changed this production later. I will tell this a little bit later. Uh, so this partner could be our local power plant producing the hydrogens. Uh, at the first stage, we want to change the vehicles in the public transportations. In the second phase, uh, the idea is to change all the utility uh, vehicles like the sweepers and the garbage trucks, uh, so they can also uh, do their jobs also during the night because they are silent. Uh, and the third stage, we we are planning to introduce some touristic vehicles like uh, small transportation uh, trains, uh, uh, vessels, uh, and some boats uh, for this transportation in the lakes because uh, our city is now transforming from the uh, huge power uh, production cities into the into the uh, touristic cities. Uh, we are coming uh, from the city which is placed in the north of the country. Uh, it's been hugely devastated by the coal mine exploitation in the past, in the 90s. Uh, and ever since this, uh, we call it so environmental revolutions, we are supporting uh, so-called green uh, energy and green productions of the electricity and, uh, and heat. Uh, starting point, uh, of course, we want to, do, to change this uh, uh, contract in 2020, uh, the contract ran out for the free public transportation with the local company, the local provider of the transportation. So we want to change this together with uh, our municipality, Valenia, and in the nearby municipality, Shostans. So all together, we are talking about here about uh, the population of the 50,000 uh, inhabitants. Uh, we developed uh, eight routes connecting both of the cities. Uh, with more than half a million kilometers uh, of, uh, of uh, public transportations annually. Uh, we estimated that about uh, half a million passengers will use uh, these uh, public free public facilities. And uh, requirements of the least uh, 44 tons of hydrogen per, per year, which means approximately 200 uh, kilograms per, per day. So uh, we define uh, the routes. Uh, I don't know if you see it well. Uh, this yellow uh, yellow route is uh, is, is a very important one because this one connects both of the cities. Uh, two buses uh, are simultaneously driving on this uh, route, which is uh, a little less than seven hundred kilometers. 
Uh, we defined the buses. We found the approximate buses uh, of the 10 and a half meter length, uh, which can uh, fulfill our requirements on these buses because uh, there's there is uh, a lot of hilly streets, uh, a lot of stream streets, and we cannot uh, drive there by the big buses. Uh, 10 and a half meter is our maximum, and with the range extension is between 350, 350 and 400 kilometers. So each of these bus could fulfill our requirements to to drive over the day and to cover all the routes uh, on on this uh, uh, on, on in the city. And uh, we, of course, we uh, have initially planned to introduce the electric vehicles, electric buses. But then we realized that there is no on the market there is no reliable electric buses who can fulfill 350 or more kilometers per day. So. In this case, we would need two buses to fulfill these uh, requirements, but with the hydrogen buses, we can have only one buses. And uh, uh, we realized that in, uh, with the, the French producer, Safra, they have uh, this Businova uh, bus type, which, can, uh, which is, uh, I would say, perfect for our uh, requirements, perfect for our needs. And uh, we were very close to launch the tender in 2020. Sorry, Bustian, this is Noor from Felsen. We are only seeing the first slide. I think maybe you have to um, reshare your slides as I had to do as well. Okay, I'll do it again. Is it better now? Bustian, but we understood uh, everything what you told and uh, Okay, uh, I, I tried to stop you <laughs> after a few minutes, but you didn't hear me, so it is not a problem because <clears throat> just start, no, no problem. Yeah. Okay, um, I would just like to say, um, just close to this uh, uh, trend. Uh, well, our project has a huge problems in 2020 because we were just about to launch our uh, tender. Uh, and then the COVID happened, and what is even more uh, difficult, the, our government changed in 2020. So uh, we have uh, we secured the money for the buying of six buses together with the nearby municipality, four for municipality of Alenia and two for the uh, nearby municipality. Uh, we secured uh, three millions of euros. Of all together, we needed three and a half million of euros uh, for these buses. So. There was almost 90 percent of the buses 90 percent of the money we secured for the buses and then we, we stuck with the refueling stations because there was a no national tender supporting uh, financially supported by the state of for these refueling stations uh we had uh, initiatives into in march 2020 you know to to finally launch uh uh this tender out uh but then COVID came and then the government changes uh, now we have a, during the COVID, nobody wants to support this kind of the projects. Now we are coming back on track uh, that we are basically we believe that we will be able to start uh, to, to launch by the state uh, this tender uh, for the refueling station. We estimate about uh, 3 million euros needed to, to build up the entire uh, facility for the refueling stations. That means the, the station, refueling stations, electrolyzers and the storage. As my colleague said uh, previously, it's very important to have a, a decent storage. Uh, this is what it's all about. And what is most important, we don't uh, plan to, to use the electricity from the power plant, but we also secure spatial, in, into our spatial plannings, uh, four acres of, uh, four hectares of the land, which is devastated by the coal mining, and we can uh, build a power plant, which uh, can initially, initially, uh, supply with all the needs for the electricity uh, and to produce enough of the hydrogen uh, consequently for the operating of these six buses. So now this is our plan. Uh, we have a lot of, of course, administrative problems, you know, how to, what kind of the permissions do we need? And uh, when we came to the, our ministry of the special planning in, in Ljubljana, uh, they were just holding their head. So we don't have a clue what kind of the permissions do you need? What are the aspects to the env environment? Uh, that's how we are also 
this is, we also stuck in here in these problems because um, our national authorities don't know what kind of the permission they need. Uh, we need uh, how to place this into the into the special plannings and uh, where to place it. Uh, this we are very close to the uh, this. Uh, Tenty corridor. Uh, we're almost 10 kilometers away, so it is very interesting to have this uh, refueling station so close to this uh, corridor. And uh, we have a great support from the both from Austria and Italy because uh, it's in both sides their initiatives to have uh, this uh, hydrogen refueling station in every 50 to 100 kilometers. So we still believe that maybe next year, if you still have a conference very similar to this project that I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about uh, our progress and that we will have a, at least we will launch under for the for the buses uh, that would be from my side uh, uh, there is uh, a lot of partners I would like uh, to show you I don't know if you can see my presentations but uh, there's a lot of partners who helped us with this path, uh, especially this uh, fuel, side, fuel cells, hydrogen joint initiatives from the Brussels and of course our local partners. Thank you very much and um, I hope you, I'll, I'll be able to for some questions. Bostian, thank you very much. And uh, hopefully you will come one day to Island of Tres and we'll meet together in our Yes. Agency. Okay. Uh, Melissa, I know that we are a little bit out of time, but I didn't have hard to stop uh, any of these uh, great presentations. So hopefully you collected some questions and we have time for a few questions. Yes. You can take the floor, Melissa. Um, Thank you. So since we are running late, um, I would say I have two questions, but I would, uh, I would select one from online participants and then I would move to, uh, to physical participants. So we had one question from um, for Mariaf about Green Island. Um, so could the project be replicated to islands with no natural gas network? So Maria, you have the floor if you heard that question. Ah, you are muted. Can you hear me well now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, in fact, I, I have already answered Acne Transfer. So, of course, not of all Green Highland partners who will uh, replicate or who will carry out the studies to replicate the projects in their own territories have a natural gas network. So, uh, I think that one of the key points of these hydrogen valleys is that there is not a single way to implement a hydrogen valley. It depends on the circumstances of the territories. So in some territories, you will have some applications. In other ones, maybe you have another. In some ones, there will be some infrastructures. In others, maybe you don't have, for example, a natural gas grid. But it, that, that does not, doesn't mean that you are not able to uh, implement or to <clears throat> develop a hydrogen valley. So we have uh, some other projects uh, in, in Spain and, and in Europe that uh, there are, for example, not focused on the, uh, natural gas grid, are focused on industry, or maybe another one that are focused on mobility. So really, it's depending on, on, on the circumstances of each territory. There is not a single way to implement a hydrogen valley. Thank you, Maria, for that uh, concise and clear answer. So now I would like to move to our participants here in the room. The, is there any question? for any of the speakers that we heard. Okay, there is one in the back. Uh, hi, uh, Maria, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah clearly. Okay. Uh, an another question for you, so you're popular with the project. Uh, <laughs> if, if I understood well, so there is a 15 megawatt uh, power of electrolyzer uh, plant to, to, to be installed. So. Uh, how, how do you see uh, this electrolyzer, so hydrogen production being uh, uh, capacity of this hydro hydrogen production because it will be connected to PV plant, as I understand, and PV plant has, uh, you know, uh, uh, daily variance of how much uh, power you get from the PV plant. Do you plan to, uh, in the night time, uh, take uh, some other electricity source and produce hydrogen, or uh, you will uh, variate the capacity of the, of the electrolyzer? Yeah. 
Thank you for the question. Uh, in our case, we have uh, built 15 megawatts of photovoltaic uh, plants, and we are starting with 2.5 megawatts electrolysis. <clears throat> and the idea is uh, that we really can cover uh, the whole uh, electrolyzer with PV plants. Uh, we have one of the plants, it's uh, close to the um, hydrogen plant, it's, uh, I mean, a few meters. And the other one is uh, 20 kilometers away, but the idea is to have a PPA in order to uh, have this uh, renewable energy uh, available, although it's uh, far away. So uh, the idea is that we are going to start with these two PV plants, but uh, you are right, when, when we have two, uh, our plan is to increase the, the, the capacity of the electrolyzer up to 7.5 megawatts. So in that point, we will have to include more new renewable uh, developments and of course new PPAs um, uh, with, a, I mean, a, a new uh, renewable energies in the island of Mallorca in order to try to cover uh, all the uh, needs that the electrolyzer uh, needs to produce this green hydrogen. Okay, well, I believe that's it, but I would like to uh, remind you all that uh, the presentations and the recording will be shared to all participants online and offline. And there was another question, but uh, Maria, you can also answer that one on the chat. And if there are more questions that pops up your mind, you will have also all the emails on the presentation, so don't hesitate to, uh, to ask all the, pre the presenters directly. Thank you, Melissa. And uh, now we deserve a, a short uh, coffee break uh, for all our uh, uh, guests that are uh, following us online. Uh, we will be back soon in 10-15 minutes and uh, please stay with us. Uh, now is uh, going the block with the Croatian presenters and uh, so you will know what is happening in Croatia regarding hydrogen. Thank you for now. Thank you all presenters for, for now and we are soon back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we are back after the break. And uh, now we have, as I announced, a block of Croatian presenters. And I have really great pleasure to announce Professor Frano Barbir. Uh, he has such a great CV, but I will just uh, read a few sentences to introduce him. So, he's a professor emeritus at Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Mechanical Engineering and Naval Architecture from University of Split. Currently employed as a project activity leader at the Center of Excellence for Science and Technology, Integration of Mediterranean Region, also at University of Split. With more than 30 years' experience on hydrogen in both industry and academia, he is one of the world leading experts on hydrogen technologies, particularly on fuel cells and electrolyzers. He is the funding president of the Croatian Hydrogen Association, vice president of the International Association for Hydrogen Energy, and the representative of the Republic of Croatia in the state's representative group and advisory body, body of the Clean Hydrogen Partnership in Brussels. Professor Barbir, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, it's great to be on the island of Tres. This is my first time here. And uh, I also welcome the idea of a, a green highland or hydrogen on the islands, because that is the idea I had many years ago. This is a slide I show at the conference at the United Nations in New York in 2008. Uh, it was called World, uh, Worldwide Islands Hydrogen Initiative that I started when I worked for you. UNIDO International Center for Hydrogen Energy Technologies. The idea is so logical because the islands are ideal polygons for demonstration of hydrogen technologies uh, and the entire hydrogen economy. It was idea in, in uh, uh, 14, 15 years ago and it's uh, 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 still a good idea now. And I said there is a thousands of islands worldwide and there's a thousands of uh, opportunities 
uh, to apply hydrogen. Uh, when I worked at the United Nations, uh, we applied uh, 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 hydrogen on the islands of Borjada in Turkey and Aitutaki in the Cook Islands in the, in the middle of Pacific. Uh, we also had a, a conference in, on the island of Braj, uh, uh, also 2008, and that was the first conference on, on a hydrogen on islands, but we never had a second or third, so this is probably the second conference hydrogen on islands. Uh, very happy to be here. Uh, I worked on hydrogen for 30 years. I mean, this idea of hydrogen on islands was probably ahead of its time. When we talked about it in 2008, people didn't understand actually what, what, do, what do we mean hydrogen on islands? I mean, what do we want to do with hydrogen on the islands? And working on hydrogen for 30 years as I do, I have always been ahead of the time. So when I talk about some of the projects that we have done, people still don't believe it. Uh, for example, this car here is the first uh, a pan fuel cell power car in the world that we developed in 1993. Then the second vehicle we used in the Atlanta Olympic Games in 1996. In 1999, we used these three vehicles in the Palm Springs Airport. We first made uh, a, a, a combined uh, a, a reform, a natural gas reform with, with a fuel cell. I also worked for the electrolyzer company and we applied this hydrogen to many renewable energy projects. Uh, I also work for United Nations, as I said, we developed some of the vehicles uh, uh, and we also applied hydrogen uh, in a, a ticketing uh, uh, office of the Hagia Sophia and also ticketing office of the uh, ferry terminal in, 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 in Istanbul. But nobody paid attention to this because we were uh, simply ahead of our time. Uh, last 15 years I worked at, at the FESB, we made a fuel cell power boat, we made a fuel cell power motorcycle. Uh, uh, we also work with the uh, uh, HISA systems in, in South Africa. We made a, a, a forklift and uh, uh, we participated also in a project where we made a, a fuel cell bus. And uh, uh, most lately, we made a complete uh, uh, hydrogen system that is applicable for any scale, including the islands. So this is a system we installed in our lab. It's uh, about three kilowatts of uh, renewable energy uh, including wind turbine and, and a photo panel. We have electrolyzer, a fuel cell, a hydrogen storage in between. We can use this hydrogen when the wind is not, or solar is not available. And uh, uh, so this system looks like this. We have a, a wind turbine uh, on, on, the, on the roof of the, uh, our university our faculty. We have photovoltaics on the roof and they are connected to the lab. In the lab, we have a system that consists of a fuel cell, control unit, electrolyzer, uh, a DC converter, electronic load, hydrogen storage in front of the uh, uh, office and uh, in front of the lab. And this system is in operation for the last six years. So for those of you who plan to install this on the island, please come and use this facility for, for uh, training purposes or for the developing of controlled algorithms. That's actually what we are, are, are doing, trying to uh, uh, develop a control algorithms for a complex system uh, uh, such as this one. I saw previously on some of the islands they are installing exactly the same uh, uh, system. So that's not the first system. This is not probably also the first system that was developed. But this was six years already in operation. Uh, I prepared many slides about the status of hydrogen technologies in, in the, uh, Europe, but I realized that people from Europe that are watching us already know this. Uh, uh, this is uh, my uh, estimate of uh, a status of, of uh, hydrogen and fuel cell technologies in the terms of uh, technology readiness level uh, for the different applications. And we see that many of them are already uh, in commercial application. This is a TRL9. Uh, uh, ships and ferries are probably lagging behind uh, uh, more than any other application. So in Europe, we already have uh, a fuel cell cars. So we have a fuel cell forklifts, buses, uh, 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 trucks are coming. Uh, trains are also being used. Uh, uh, we heard of something about ferries and the ships. Uh, uh, and sometimes it's very difficult to distinguish. Do they already have a fuel cell ship or don't have a fuel cell ship? Because people talk about the projects, uh, uh, ideas, the same as they talk about the project. For me, the project is something that you make and the idea is something that you will make. And uh, sometimes the marketing is much stronger than, than engineering. Also, the airplane, uh, uh, our neighbors already actually have a, a, a hydrogen powered uh, uh, airplane, uh, hydrogen delivery is, is commercial, hydrogen refueling stations, there are more than 200 hydrogen refueling stations uh, 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 worldwide. Uh, electrolyzers are now very popular, hydrogen storage uh, and hydrogen production from renewable energy sources on, on a large scale. All these technologies are being deployed. We have a European hydrogen strategy, we have 
Croatian hydrogen strategy. And I think uh, uh, finally, you know, when I, I, in these 30 years, when people ask me what I do, when I tell them I work on hydrogen, they, they thought I was a, a science fiction writer. I, I work on science fiction. And now hydrogen is not science fiction anymore. Hydrogen is, is already there. There is a list of hydrogen projects. There is more than 300 uh, uh, hydrogen projects in Europe, and there is a map, interactive map, that you can actually go and see where these projects are taking place and what is included is just production of hydrogen or utilization of hydrogen or both production and and utilization. Uh, uh, this is uh, opportunities for hydrogen energy technologies in Croatia. It is a study that was done by the fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking. They estimated what, it, what could be produced, how hydrogen could be produced and for what purposes would be used in uh, each of the European countries including the Croatia. So this shows a potential that can be done and shows the range. So for Croatia, there is a potential, this is by 2030, to include uh, between 26 and 150 megawatts of electrolysis in Croatia. And uh, our strategy actually is somewhere in, in between of this, these two numbers. So there's a low and high estimate. And this hydrogen that can be produced from renewable energy from uh, wind and, and photovoltaic plants can be used uh, for uh, transportation, it can be used in industry, both as a feedstock or, or uh, uh, fuel, and it can be used to, to balance the uh, power grid, and it can use or be used in, in the buildings. And this uh, study actually is available online, you can find it if you go to Fuses Hydrogen Joint Undertaking or now Clean Hydrogen uh, Partnership, uh, you can find this study and see what it includes. It also estimates how many jobs will be created, how much emissions will be avoided, and, 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 and so on. So this was the, for me, this was the basis for our strategy. Uh, I was also a member of the uh, uh, working group that uh, developed uh, the, this uh, uh, Croatian hydrogen strategy that was adopted by our parliament uh, just uh, one month uh, ago. And uh, uh, this uh, Croatian strategy provides a national vision of research development reduction infrastructure and use of hydrogen in, in Croatia. Uh, uh, the objectives of the strategy is decarbonization of, of hydrogen production and use of green hydrogen as a replacement for uh, fossil fuels. And also increasing stability of the uh, power system based on intermittent renewable energy sources. Uh, uh, hydrogen potential in Croatia is in power generation from renewable energy sources. Uh, which can provide adequate and long-term supply of renewable green hydrogen. And today we've also heard about other possibilities of producing hydrogen from uh, uh, waste. Uh, there are several ongoing projects in Croatia. The first one I listed there is a complete autonomous hydrogen system that we already have at uh, uh, FESB, uh, 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 University of Split. Uh, there is a similar installation at the University of uh, Zagreb, and the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. My colleague Anki Tsakovac has developed a fuel cell bicycle and a hydrogen refueling station uh, uh, for that bicycle. And there are several projects that are, as I wrote there, at the different stages of development. And I will go one by one presenting you here. So one of them is the city of Zagreb prepared a study for which we got a PDA. Uh, which is a project development assistance from fuel cells hydrogen joint uh, undertaking, uh, uh, where develop a, a, a study that envisions a purchase of 20 buses in Zagreb and establishing infrastructure for powering this, uh, uh, refueling these buses using uh, uh, hydrogen produced from renewable energy uh, uh, in the ref uh, refinery, uh, Rijeka refinery. The original idea was to use uh, uh, a grey hydrogen produced in the Rijeka refinery, but that is out of question for any project that is being financed uh, by European money. Uh, there will be actually two refueling stations. One will be inside uh, a Z, uh, which is a, a public transport operator in Zagreb, and the other one will be uh, uh, public. So this project has been prepared and is now waiting for, for implementation. Uh, uh, we, when I said we mean uh, FESB, we prepared a pre-feasibility study on the electrolyzer installation uh, at the oil refinery in Rijeka, and I think the next speaker will talk more about uh, 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 this uh, uh, possibility of ENA getting involved in producing uh, green hydrogen. They already produce a lot of uh, uh, hydrogen from natural gas that they use for their own 
uh, uh, purposes, and they have a spare capacity, they can actually sell this hydrogen, but I think the next speaker will talk more about this. A similar study has been done for HEP, uh, uh, the, uh, the Combi thermoelectric uh, power plant uh, Yertovets is going out of commission uh, very soon, and, and in its place, they uh, exploring uh, uh, what could be done. So one of the ideas was to include the battery system and the electrolyzer at that location. Uh, uh, that hydrogen can be used for uh, a different application. We also pr performed this. Actually, the Institute Hrue Pozhar performed the uh, uh, pre-feasibility study. Uh, uh, I participated as a consultant for, for hydrogen. Uh, we have a project at the, uh, in, in Split. Uh, there is a company that has a, 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 a catamaran, Komija, that uh, operates from a, a Split airport to the city of uh, Split uh, in 30 minutes. And uh, we are now converting this boat to run on hydrogen. We already took it out and we took the engine out, we took the gearbox out, and we are now purchasing the fuel cells and, uh, and uh, electric motors to be put in, uh, in, uh, in, in this catamaran. And uh, it, it will be actually hybrid propulsion because it includes uh, fuel cells and the batteries. Uh, when we made the calculations, uh, uh, if we put only the batteries, it would have been too heavy. So it wouldn't be able to reach the speed that is required for this trip. And if we put the hydrogen, it'll be too much hydrogen. There'll be not enough space on the on, on uh, deck of the ship. It will also have a photovoltaic panel that will produce about 30 kilowatts uh, power, but that will be only for uh, auxiliary loads for the lights and the air conditioning on, on, on board. Uh, a main propulsion will be done by combination of hydrogen and the fuel cells. So the fuel cell will work all the time, uh, uh, providing uh, some of the power, and the rest of the power will come from the batteries. And then when the ship is not operating full power, the fuel cell will recharge the battery. So at the end of the day, at least the calculations show the boat will be, the battery level will be the same as it was in the beginning. But nevertheless, we will also provide for uh, overnight recharging the batteries if, if necessary. And uh, the project North Adriatic Cross Border Hydrogen Valley has been already mentioned earlier today. Just before this meeting, I participated in the meeting, uh, a first meeting of the joint expert group that has been established. Uh, our, one of our next speakers, Ivana, is also a member of this joint working group. Uh, uh, so uh, Italy, actually the region of uh, uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia, uh, uh, Slovenia and Croatia are preparing a joint proposal to the Clean uh, Hydrogen Partnership on uh, uh, establishing a North Adriatic cross-border hydrogen valley. We already heard before what hydrogen valley is and how many hydrogen valleys we have in Europe. So this is proposal to have another one. Uh, the letter of intent has been signed. The joint expert working group has been established and uh, uh, there'll be cooperation on industrial level, uh, cooperation on scientific level uh, as well. And this is a great opportunity for every project in Croatia to be included because one of the first steps we do mapping of all the potential of projects and potential projects in Croatia. So uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 on, uh, on island of stress, we can have a part of this project as, as well. So conclusion, uh, hydrogen technologies are being developed, deployed all over Europe. Uh, hydrogen is an unavoidable part of a future energy system based 100% of renewable energy. You cannot have a 100% system of renewable energy without, without hydrogen on that scale. And, and islands may become, and this, of course, for Europe, this is envisioned for 2050, but islands can become energy independent, independent much sooner. So for islands, there is a, a, a more perspective for hydrogen uh, to be used in energy management using excess electricity uh, from renewables when the sun is shining and there is no uh, demand or make up for shortages. So hydrogen will provide the seasonal storage as one of the previous speakers ha have shown in the diagram of hydrogen seasonal storage. Hydrogen can also be used as a, as a sector integration because we can use hydrogen for transport, not only for uh, storing electricity, and we can use it for uh, transport on islands where uh, on islands it will be more difficult because the batteries are sufficient because islands have a short distances. So traveling uh, uh, 50 kilometers a day, uh, batteries are perfectly uh, well, but uh, for the ships and ferries, hydrogen may be a better option. And Croatia has uh, hundreds of islands. There's, I think there's a 60 of some of them uh, inhabited. It. So there is uh, many opportunities for uh, Croatian islands as well. So 
That's it. Thank you very much. Did I make it in nine and a half minutes? <laughs> yes. Okay. I will take another microphone. So, okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Or maybe I'll take it. Okay. Thank you. Professor Barbit, thank you very much. It was really inspiring, and what you have done in the past, and what are you doing uh, today, these days, and uh, really now is a great pleasure to invite uh, Ms. Christina Gilkic from INA, our oil company, main oil company in Croatia, but we know from past that uh, oil companies in the world are slowly moving towards uh, green energy, uh, it is a process, and uh, we are very curious what is INA and you doing on uh, hydrogen project. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for invitation. It will be hard to speak after such a fluent and experienced speaker as Mr. Frano Barbieri is, but I will do my best to, to show you something about g green hydrogen production in INA. Uh, I have been working for INA for the last 20 years. Currently, I am working in a technology development and uh, leading the hydrogen project in INA. First, to say a few words about INA for those of you who still do not know us. We are a medium-sized European oil company with a really strong position in a in uh, Croatia and in the region. Uh, main, mainly we are dealing with fossil fuels through our exploration and production division, which is uh, on our more than 1,200 valves uh, uh, pick up the, the, the crude oil from, from still from Croatia. Um, we are uh, also uh, refine, refine this crude and uh, via refining and marketing division we are selling more than 4 million tons of fossil fuels. So this is uh, really a huge market and a strong market share in Croatia with more than 70%. Daily via more than 500 of our uh, retail location, we are selling roughly 3 million liters of the fuels. So, as you can see, we are very skilled and experienced with fossil fuels, but our regulation push us further, and what we uh, would like to, to do in the future, uh, we would like to make the transport greener. Why? Because according to national uh, energy plan, we have to reach the target of 14% of renewable energy sources share in gross final energy consumption in transport. To reach this goal on uh, 2030, we have a, a mid-term plan, which is uh, slightly lower, but still high enough. So to reach almost 12% of renewable energy sources by 2026, we have a lot to do. Uh, this will for sure decarbonize the whole energy sector since the share of liquid fuels in the total energy consumption is 33% in Croatia. So by increasing this percentage of renewables, we will for sure help to decarbonize the, the whole energy system. Um, how we can do it? We can do it via blending biofuels in our fossil fuels. Of course, with a limited amount of available second generation of biofuels. But this goal is uh, almost impossible to achieve without uh, more intensive involvement in uh, hydrogen production and development of hydrogen infrastructure for use in transport. So, um, our experience with, uh, we have a lot of experience in hyd in hyd as hydrogen consumer, as, as hydrogen producer. So, uh, as you probably know, currently the, the biggest 
consumers of hydrogen in the world are refining at pet chem industry. So nowadays we are producing roughly 25 kilotons yearly of hydrogen in our Rijeka refinery. And by finishing the, the project of uh, delay cooker, we expecting that our yearly needs for hydrogen will raise up to 35 even more kilotons. So this is a huge uh, uh, amount of hydrogen which is currently produced, of course, from fossil fuels on our steam methane reformer unit, which is uh, the, the bigger uh, CO2 producer also, also on our location. Due to, due to such a huge amount of hydrogen, uh, our emission is uh, really big and we want to decrease it. So we, we start a new business with this uh, project hydrogen. We will uh, launch a project in which we would like to uh, produce green hydrogen using electrolysis uh, first to, to support transport sector with the possibility to use this hydrogen within a refinery. Uh, with this uh, project, we would like to produce about 1,500 tons per year of hydrogen, which can save roughly 25 kilotons of CO2 in transport, replacing the standard diesel bus. When we express it in other words, per every kilogram of hydrogen which we put in the transportation market, <coughs> sorry, for every kilogram of hydrogen which we put on the transportation sector as a fuel, the CO2 emission uh, decrease is roughly 17 kilograms. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, what is shown in this uh, green rectangle is the uh, uh, scope of the project within Rijeka refinery site. So, uh, project uh, consists of solar power plant, uh, electrolyzer, which is of course the generator of hydrogen and storage system with the trailer filling station. Uh, hydrogen refueling stations are still out of scope, but uh, we expect that we will also develop in this direction soon. On this scheme, you can see the, the project outline. So the focal point is 10 megawatt electrolyzer, which will be capable to produce uh, 1,500 tons of hydrogen per year. The feedstock for the hydrogen is, of course, water. But uh, another more demanding feedstock is this renewable energy, since we want to have renewable products of product without CO2 emissions. Therefore, we will build a 7 megawatt photovoltaic plant within the, the refinery. We predict that we have a space and opportunity to build a bigger one, but this will be uh, the, the first, this is the first idea which is still developed. Additional renewable electricity, what we need for this electrolyzer, we will buy from Croatian electrical network since we have a significant portion of renewable electricity in our system. Um, of course, we will have to store this hydrogen with uh, primarily uh, uh, to, to be able to smoothly uh, filling the trailers who will deliver this hydrogen to our final customer. But in case of lack of demand, we plan to build a, connection, build a connection to refinery to be able to use this green hydrogen as a refinery feedstock. What is our driver? Uh, national uh, Recovery and Resilience Plan, which, uh, which set up the target for these first five years to build up a 10 megawatt electrolyzer. 
of course, with uh, initial, initial network of hydrogen refilling stations. 10 megawatt electrolyzer is, uh, has a possibility to produce this one and a half kiloton of hydrogen yearly and to decrease the CO2 for 25 kilotons yearly if we put this hydrogen in the transport sector. According to the same plan, National Recovery and Resilience Plan, uh, next 20 megawatts are planned to be uh, supported in the uh, next five years. So we expect that the green hydrogen production will raise and consequently CO2 emissions will go down proportionally. Uh, Croatian strategy set up a goal for 2030 for 70 megawatt electrolyzer. We wish we, we could uh, participate in fulfillment of this goal with uh, a scale up of our electrolyzer in Rijeka refinery. Uh, what is our target and what is our final customer? Uh, for sure, uh, we are oriented to the transport sector, to the road, rail and sea sector, transport sector. In the rail, uh, we count on still non-electrified railways, but our main focus are utility services providers in, a, in the big cities, so uh, other shipping and delivery companies, but primarily we would be focus on a public transport. Why on a public transport? Because we see that uh, fuel cell electric vehicles uh, is most matured in this, uh, in this way of transport. This, this buses has the same operating range and uh, uh, short refueling time with uh, comparable diesel buses. So uh, with um, such a technology which is commercially available these days, with only 150 buses within Croatia, we can consume, th this fleet can consume this amount of hydrogen which will be produced, what will make possible to establish the first hydrogen chain in Croatia. And that's shortly what I want to say with, share with you. So if you have questions, I am available. Thank you very much. So save your questions for the end of the block. Thank you, Ms. Kristina Gjukic. <clears throat> and now we come slowly to the docking company. Uh, I know the manager and the, and the owner of Yekoslav uh, Majetic for more than 25 years and when I judge him I will put on the first place that he is first the great inventor and innovation, an innovator and then the great manager and so on, whatever it is. Uh, Docking uh, uh, did a great job with uh, uh, the mining devices, uh, he's exporting this in more than 40 countries and uh, he will be later on uh, our panelist, but I'm now uh, asking uh, Ms. Nadja Dizdarevic. She's also coming from Docking, and she will present what is new in Docking regarding all new technologies and especially hydrogen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are pleased to be invited to such an, an amazing uh, and great conference and workshop. So thank you, Mr. Yardars, for inviting us. We are also very thankful uh, for an opportunity to present our technology and our company here. Um, we would like. I would like to. Uh, I would like to give you a short overview, a brief and um, a clear overview of our technology. We, due to the fact that we are limit, limited with the time, I'll try to be short and concise. And of course, if you have any other uh, questions, uh, I'm here. I'm available for further clarifications at the end at discussion. And of course, Mr. Majetic is here. And he is, as you already said, our big creation inventor. So if you have any question, you can also ask him. 
So uh, let me please start with, uh, with a few sentences about our docking company. Uh, docking company is an uh, international leader in, uh, in this pr production of high-end special uh, robotic systems. Uh, docking is um, established in, before, in more than 30 years ago. It's completely 100% uh, creation company owned by Mr. Majetic and um, it specializes in, uh, I would say, specific technologies. Uh, not only that docking spe uh, special, spe specializes in um, mining and uh, underground uh, mining uh, technologies. It also, also specializes in development and production of, orga of organic material pyrogasification py py plants which produce uh, hydrogen from syngas. We have uh, different experts in, uh, in our company and I can say uh, that we uh, specialize not only in solving uh, in, in a, the system which uh, helps uh, saving human lives, we also save um, environment and human, and human uh, health. So therefore, uh, we established also a few years ago a company Docking Energo, which is part of Docking Group, and it, uh, Docking Energo specializes in, um, in, the, in, in renewable energy and uh, sustainable waste management. I will give you um, uh, more information about um, te our technology um, further in presentation. So, uh, regarding our potential, I would like to emphasize that, we, uh, that our technology is, um, uh, is made by uh, experts, my, our in-house R&D team, which contains of more than 50 experts in, uh, in construction, uh, chemical and electrical engineering. Uh, we, we are making, making our uh, R&D and our technology development completely uh, in-house and it's also important that we consider uh, collaboration as a key fact for every project development. Therefore, we work closely and intensively with, uh, with experts and uh, professors and academics from uh, Faculty of Chemical Engineering, Civil Engineering and Mechanical Engineering. We believe that uh, we believe that collaboration of experts is a key for every project and therefore we, we work intensively with them. Um, I would also um, say, just a second, sorry. I would also say that uh, we created a technology which is located in Zagreb, in Croatia, in, at our premises of docking and that our technology achieved uh, a technology readiness level 6, which means that we have, uh, have technology which is, which is already proved and tested at our location. Uh, let me say something uh, about uh, what, is, uh, what was our pr primary goal and aim uh, to develop such a technology. Our first and primary goal was to, to solve the problem of organic waste. So firstly we started to, uh, to managing waste, uh, to managing waste which, has to be, uh, which was to be uh, disposed at landfill. So this organic waste contains of uh, municipal solid waste, uh, sewage sludge and plastics. So our first and primary aim was to solve this uh, waste. Later on during the project development we realized that, that we can also get some really uh, rich rich uh, byproducts, uh, that, which means that from the organic waste we can get really rich syngas, which can be further used for um, uh, ge generating electricity, heat and as well as hydrogen. For example, from, we made uh, tests from sewage sludge and we, uh, we received uh, results that uh, syngas from the sewage sludge contains more than 40% of hydrogen. So uh, syngas is really uh, rich hydrogen uh, gas. Uh, later on, we also realized that we can g get a carbon black, which can also achieve really great, uh, pr really high price at, at the market. But I must emphasize that all these byproducts depends mainly on, uh, on customers' uh, requirements and needs, because we are a completely customer-oriented company. So we closely collaborate with our, we hear our customers and we create a technology and plant which is completely customer-oriented. Um, also, um, uh, we think that it's very important that uh, 
to tell you that um, our uh, our technology solves the waste uh, on site so we can completely solve the problem of the waste uh, of Croatian islands what does it mean we don't need uh, Croatian islands with our technology doesn't need uh, don't need um, high uh, transportation which has a really high price also hydrogen and electricity can be generate, generated at the location of Croatian islands so the Croatian islands can be completely energy independent. Uh, I would say I will, would like to say something more about uh, our plant. Uh, we have internal working name Looper, what, which, which means um, uh, product, a technology plant uh, which generates uh, energy from waste, and it's in, it continues to doing that in, indefinitely. So we call it. In, internally in our company uh, Looper. You can see the, the photo, the, the project of our uh, Looper plant at, at the PowerPoint, PowerPoint slide. And you can see some uh, main specifications of our technology and slide. So uh, what is the main point? Uh, the main point is significant reduction of organic waste. Uh, what we create from the waste is uh, energy and solid residue production. The uh, energy contains, of course, of hydrogen, heat or electricity, as I already mentioned. And residue production uh, contains of carbon black, which can be used, for example, in construction industry. It's also important to emphasize that this plant is completely energy self-sustainable. So we don't need, after uh, initial power, we don't need extra power to, to generate, uh, to, to to, to, for um, for uh, the, for a plant to to continue working. Also, what is a really important topic nowadays, uh, there is no greenhouse uh, gas emissions from the plant. So uh, it creates a green hydrogen electricity with no uh, with no uh, CO2 emissions. Um, also, this technology, uh, the, the complete process is done in two parts, which uh, firstly eliminates uh, all harmful gases and helps to control the processes and produces hydrogen from syngas and carbon black. So we can say and conclude this, that this uh, system is an uh, innovative syngas purification uh, system. Uh, at this photo, you can see uh, technical details, but uh, due to the fact that we are limited in time, I don't want to continue further uh, with the details. So maybe we can discuss it later at the discussion, or later if you have, of course, any questions, or, or if you need any further cl clarifications. Um, I would say that I would just want to emphasize that uh, our technology is completely patented and it's uh, completely creation uh, te technology made and developed by, uh, develop, developed by our engineers at the uh, location in our company in Zagreb. Uh, what is uh, innovative with our technology, as I already mentioned, uh, we create uh, green hydrogen and electricity from, uh, from organic waste and uh, we, don't, um, em em we don't make any greenhouse emission gases. Uh, at the moment, uh, we are in a project of installment of this uh, plant at Island of Vis and uh, we are continuing uh, further with, uh, with our project and we believe that we can help uh, the island of Wies to become first uh, completely green and energy independent island in Croatia. Uh, also, we have a lot of inquirements from uh, European Union, for, from, for example, from uh, Canary Islands, and we are speaking really intensively with uh, potential buyers, but at the moment, uh, the, our first uh, goal is to, to install the, the plant at the Croatian island because it's completely Croatian uh, technology, and we, we are proud of it, of course. Uh, you can see uh, our uh, prototype plant here on the photos. Uh, this is, uh, the prototype is located at, uh, at our premises in Zagreb. We make tests at, uh, with this prototype and also we are building at the moment a bigger plant, which is about to be finished in 
well, let's say we planned in uh, two months. And of course, we we invite you all if you have further questions to, to see our plant in uh, in in how how our plant uh, works and the complete systems and complete uh, technology in Zagreb. We would be we would be very happy to to clarify every the complete technology to you, and. Uh, you can see also further photos. Okay, so you can see uh, the reactor here on the on the right photo, and on the left you can see the complete system. But but as I mentioned, it's only prototype system. It's a really small small plant, and we are working at the moment on a 10 ton plant. Uh, what does it mean? That means that this plant can uh, can solve 10 ton, tons of waste uh, in one day. Also, we have another prototype, which is 25 tons, what we, which means that it can solve 25 tons of uh, organic waste per day. So we think that these quantities are uh, pretty much acceptable for Croatian islands and its, uh, its uh, waste. Uh, you can see part of our teams. Uh, our teams consist of uh, PhDs and PhD candidates, and uh, of course it's only a small part of the team. Our team consists of more than 50 R&D engineers, but okay, this is uh, the, the main team. And thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I'm not an engineer, but of course if you have questions, I'll be here available for you. <laughs> thank you. Similar. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, congratulations to, to company Docking. Uh, I know in this uh, kind of equipment uh, you need a very high temperature uh, for, for gasification and uh, to produce uh, syngas. And also, but maybe that is a question for another hour session, uh, you have to cut waste in uh, small particles and so on. Okay, so hopefully you will solve all these problems and uh, we will wait for your equipment to be tested in the, in the, in the field. Uh, now we have uh, our last presentation in this block. Uh, it is Ivana Schauks Jukic. Uh, I think she's a chemical engineer. She's all the way traveling from France to Croatia and back. And uh, she has, uh, I think, similar presentation or, or how to somehow uh, transfer the waste uh, to the hydrogen and they're planning uh, one of these projects on the island of Tres and we are very curious to, to, to see in which phase is this project now. Thank you, Ivana. Thank you, dear Darko, for this lovely introduction. Um, yeah, as you've already heard, my name is Ivana Shoyukic and I'm here representing Active Solera, which is a creation startup developing something similar that you've already heard. And as we're approaching the end of this block of presentations, I mean, is there anything I have to say after all these great presentations? I hope I will find some more insights for you to, to hear today. So as you can see from the title of my presentation, our company is engaged into building ecosystems for a sustainable zero carbon future. And uh, also we believe in the power of decentralized hydrogen production to complement big production hubs and to uh, bring energy transition uh, right away anywhere. So to leave no nobody behind. As you've already heard a lot about uh, electrolysis and Naja has uh, just presented the ways to hydrogen technology. Um, I will say that while there have been great progress in uh, ways to hydrogen technologies. There are still some issues to be addressed and some uh, room for improvement. We need to decarbonize and we need to do this fast. And of course, clean hydrogen is uh, a great candidate for, to do this. So in order to meet the EU goals uh, that we've set for 2050, um, the hydrogen, clean hydrogen market will have to increase by 73 times until 2050 to meet these goals. Uh, this means that technologies used to produce this clean hydrogen will need to scale up to, to get competitive because the price of hydrogen is important. So um, even though ways to hydrogen 
uh, besides electrolysis, is a great asset for decarbonization, there are still some points that we need to address. Um, and among these, I mean, first of all, the environmental impact. I mean, if we produce clean hydrogen using waste to hydrogen technologies, do we really want to emit toxic substances in the atmosphere or into the ground? Well, this is not the point uh, if we want to decarbonize and clean the atmosphere. So another question that I want to um, address here is uh, that of the energy consumption of um, waste to hydrogen processes. And this means that this pro these processes need to be efficient without using fossil sources to power, or even not too much of that uh, renewable energy that is so precious today. So the last point that I want to um, touch on this ground is that these processes need to be standardized and yet adaptable to each new location and every uh, type of waste there is. Uh, to, to get rid of, so for that to say. So this seems that there is a lot to take into account, but luckily there have been some good news from the scientific uh, community, which are describing technologies such as uh, plasma gasification in waste to hydrogen uh, technologies. So um, this, is, this uh, type of technology, ga plasma gasification, is uh, described as one of the cleanest uh, most sustainable uh, and um, environmentally friendly technology uh, regarding waste treatment and production of hydrogen from, or energy in general from, from waste. But even though it's very promising, there is still this question of energy consumption and this means that these types of plants use up to 15 or 20 percent of the total plant output. So this re represents a certain cost and also um, increases the cost of your final output, uh, that is to say, clean hydrogen. So how do we um, solve this hydrogen <laughs> equation? Uh, by using direct solar heat uh, with no electricity from the grid. And this way, through solar pyrolysis and the process of clean plasma gasification, we can obtain clean hydrogen. So this is how we solve the, the hydrogen equation, by removing the needs for um, electricity. The unique advantages of this SMO technology is, uh, of course, its energy, complete energy autonomy, which allows um, operating without the use of fossil fuels, fuels or even connection to the grid. And by using the patented SMO cyclonic gasification, plasma gasification, there can be stored uh, great amounts of CO2 in the form of carbon recycling products. And by this, we can secure a negative carbon footprint, which is very important in decarbonizing and effectively. And because it's a modular tech and uh, we have multiple revenue streams, we can reach very competitive prices for this clean hydrogen, which is important to, to reach the market. So our mission is to accelerate just energy transition, leaving nobody behind, and by offering solutions to, uh, for effective cross-sector uh, decarbonization. And why is the price of hydrogen important? I mean, this is actually the decisive parameter for uh, many offtake contracts. And if a renewable hydrogen it cannot meet the market needs by its price, then it will just rem remain another good idea. And to put good ideas, and this is very important to know because uh, um, electrolysis today uh, has reached costs which are still not competitive on the market, even though there have been great achievements in regarding the efficiency of the processes, but this will take time to reach market prices that we can achieve uh, by producing hydrogen from fossil so sources with carbon capture. So we can see here that ways to hydrogen in general are more economically suitable in this case, but in the case of SMO process, we remove the need for external energy, um, thus we operate on very low operative costs, and also we develop uh, low capex infrastructures. Altogether, this leads to drastically cheaper hydrogen. And uh, this is important to uh, bring this market to life and not keep it just, just on, on the, the idea level. And to put uh, good ideas to life, uh, together with our partners, 
the municipalities of uh, Tres and Mali Loshin, and as well as the local waste management uh, agency. Uh, our plan is to develop, be, develop and build a pilot plant on, on Tres Island, which will be operating by 2024. Um, this pilot plant will showcase the capacities of SMO technology to prepare and transform waste into valuable outputs. And by this I mean clean energy, clean hydrogen, and carbon recycling uh, products which have a high market value. Well, when you say uh, producing 800 tons of hydrogen from waste per year, what does this mean? I mean, what, what will it, we do with this? So, um, this means, for example, as Patrick said in, in one of the presentations that that were up this morning, that the holy grail of uh, renewable energies is storage. Well, storing this renewable energy in the form of hydrogen means that one can produce electricity from it at any time. So imagine, for example, a nice summer evening in August, which is very hot, and uh, you have a lot of energy demand at night. So how will you produce this electricity? Well, there's the magic of hydrogen and using it to produce en energy or electricity on the spot. So for example, uh, this means that using waste in a smart way on this archipelago, Tres Loshin, and using uh, waste which is available, non-recyclable and non-food biomass, it means that you can produce energy which is up to one quarter of total energy consumption. I mean. I'm just in love with this idea, I'm sorry if I'm over enthusiastic, but this, is, this seems great to me. So, uh, not only that you can produce clean energy and get rid of the waste, you will also decrease the costs because you don't transport waste from the island, and this will have, as a consequence, lower costs for the local population, and also better compliance to EU directives, which um, urge to decrease landfill waste. So. This are, these are all great ideas, and we really believe in these systems, decentralized systems that serve to produce energy. Um, but we cannot do this alone, and I'm very happy to announce that uh, this project has, uh, is actually in the sub-grant preparation by the um, European Islands Facility and the Nassoy um, Secretariat for a grant, so I hope this will be um, done very quickly. And uh, to conclude this presentation, we really believe in uh, synergy and in uh, well-embedded ecosystems where everybody has something to win. So we, our vision is to develop clean systems, decentralized energy production, and if you want to help us accelerate this energy transition, please contact us and become our partner. Let us leave nothing to waste. Thank you very much, and I believe that now we will be open to taking questions. Thank you, Ivana, very much. You opened more questions, actually, than, than uh, we deserved for the end of, the, <laughs> of this uh, workshop. For example, we, we have seen uh, during the day that we have many kind of production, producing uh, hydrogen, we have many uh, ways to, to uh, transfer hydrogen to electricity or as a fuel or how we produce it. We saw from your last slide that uh, it is not the same uh, how we commercialize uh, the, the, the hydrogen at the end. I'm sad that we are at the end actually of uh, these two blocks. It was very interesting. Uh, Melissa, do we have some questions? Yes, uh, it's not really the end because participants uh, had a lot of uh, questions, okay. but uh, we're Perfect. running late, so I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> to merge some of them. Um, uh, first, the, there, was, uh, there was great interest about the North Adriatic Valley, uh, so expect maybe some, uh, some reaching out about that. Uh, there were as well questions for Christina, so we'll try to merge these. Um, so someone uh, would like maybe to clarify, uh, Christina, uh, if when you mention private users, uh, you mean individual cars or still heavy duty, and also, if you have uh, given any thought about the directive on alternative fuel infrastructure facility 
related to the vehicles uh, and the hydrogen refueling station infrastructures. So, if uh, you have a microphone, okay, good. Uh, the question was related to private cars in a road Yes, in a so road there were two questions. First, uh, what do you mean by pri private users? Do you mean individual cars? Yes, or heavy we duty? mean individual cars, but this is the, the latest point on this uh, road transportation sector. So we first have to rely on a big customer to be able to to sell this amount of hydrogen, but of course, at the end of this chain are the private customers with the private cars, which will be able to fulfill their fuel cell vehicles on our retail station, but primarily we see as an introduction for this hydrogen value chain that uh, the, we should rely on a bigger customer such as public transportation in our main cities. So this is the, the primary focus, but of course at the end of the day, uh, we will offer the hydrogen in our retail station and hopefully this network will grow up fast so uh, we would be able as a touristic country to offer hydrogen all around Croatia for such type of vehicles. And what was the second I forgot? Yes, the question was uh, a bit more... Uh Complicated. It was about the directive on hydrogen refueling station, uh, alternative fuel infrastructure facility. I don't know if you're familiar with that one, related to uh, the vehicles. And uh, it was Patrick asking this one, uh, whether you had given any thought about this directive um, and uh, yes, about the hydrogen refueling station infrastructures. Uh, as I said, the project which I led, uh, scope is slightly narrowed and finished and, uh, at uh, hydrogen trucks, which is delivering the, the hydrogen as a fuel to the retail station. But, uh, of course, we would uh, like to comply with all the regulations which are valid and finally... Uh, respect the, the, the law which will f push us, but also enable us to deliver our final product to our customer. Okay. Thank you for him. Uh, and then there was one question uh, for Ivana, so, uh, that we just received, so let me check from Tatiana. Um, She's asking if uh, you could elaborate on waste management prior to hydrogen conversion. Sure. I think she means on waste preparation before using it in the system for transformation. At least that's how I understood it. So, yeah, we have a facility actually that uh, is included in the whole uh, system, which um, is used to uh, dry, uh, granulate and prepare waste. Uh, for it to be um, actually used as a fuel in uh, pyrolysis and uh, and the plasma gasification afterwards. So, yeah, there is a whole system which is used for this. She says yes, so you were <laughs> <laughs> on point. Okay, is there any other question from participants here in the room? I think everyone is hungry and <laughs> would like to... Yeah, I think you can close that call. Once again, thank you everybody. A special thank go to our uh, guests that were uh, following us uh, online. Thank you very much for being patient and uh, be at the end, to the end uh, to this uh, second block. Thank you all you here in conference room for uh, listening and, and participating uh, with questions. And a special thank go to all our uh, presenters and uh, lecturers today. And uh, we all hope that we will meet on some similar workshop very soon because, Melissa, you are going to organize some other workshop. This is the first one of, uh, from, from uh, Green Iceland. So we expect uh, your call for another meeting. There will okay. be also uh, webinars. So uh, if, uh, if you want to register to the newsletter or if you already did, uh, don't hesitate uh, to go to the, the website. But uh, there will be more activities for sure. So, yeah, thank you.
And thank you, Darko, for a great moderation. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. So, okay, let's finish with this. And uh, I think very successful workshop today from beautiful island of Tres. Thank you very much for everybody. <laughs>